Okay. Oh, no. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Asus RO Gym League. I slept amazing. And uh, you should also notice I'm wearing this nice vest right now. And you should definitely check out my guns. Just, they're absolutely brilliant. Uh, also joining me to my left, uh, someone who looks fabulous today is Bruno. I'm looking particularly good today. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> James? Yeah. I, I just, you know, I'm just going to lean back here and confirm you are looking great. Excellent, that's uh, brilliant. Also, um, some sort of miracle hair grow going on here as we've got Shane back in the studio. How are you doing today, Shane? Excellently. <sighs> doing great. Slept well. It just looks, you know, like that looks amazing. It looks like you should just swing your hair back. And just, wow. Wow, Shane. How does it feel? money on shampoo this morning. I wish rough. I could have your hair now. <laughs> All right, uh, Lumi, I don't know what happened to you yesterday, but I'm at least just happy you, you turned up. 我睡觉睡得不错,今天早吃的也不错,今天我很准备这个 uh, uh, Dream League action. Mm -hmm. Nice shirt, by the way. 谢谢. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, uh, Andy, welcome back. You're ready to do some excellent analysis. You know, normally you're always angry at everybody, but, you know, are you okay today? Yeah, I'm, I'm in like a really good mood today. I actually used the same hair product that Shane did, but I didn't get quite the same results. <laughs> I kind of like got halfway there and then kind of stopped. And plus, I, I kind of took Tony's tweet to heart and decided to dress up a bit today. Oh, it's a very nice jumper. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, all right. Well, happy you're all here. Uh, we're going to get on with the show now. We're going to be kicking off the matches in just a moment. So when we come back, we'll be kicking off the second day of the Super Weekend. Check out my guns one more time. That's my nipples. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the studio for the uh, ASSR Dream League Super Weekend here. And we're at the Monster Energy Dreamhack Studio, TV6 and all the other things I'm going to say. Um, but a really big day. We've got 30 minutes almost to talk about everything that's going to be happening. Um, there's a lot that could happen today, um, but excellent intro, guys. You know, well done. The yeah. first part of the show was great, but it seems down. <laughs> down. I'd rather be looking at uh, the other members of the cast that we had on stage. Um, so, okay, how is it, how is it going? Actually, all right. I didn't really sleep last night because someone put a studio in my room. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I actually slept my healthy four hours, so I'm feeling good. All right. Well, hopefully you're feeling good because we've got some great games coming up. And this is, these are the games that we have. First up is going to be Alliance versus Fnatic. Very important for both. We'll talk about why in just a little bit as well as the other games. Then we're going to have Virtus Bro versus Meet Your Makers. None of these teams can actually go through, so this is just you know a crowd pleaser. Hopefully they come out with some great matches. And then Rox Kiss versus VP. Now Rox Kiss actually still have a chance to qualify, surprisingly enough, but it does uh, equate to how Fnatic, Navi, and Alliance do. So Rox Kiss need to win versus Virtus Pro, and then Navi versus EG. These games are big for EG, they're big for Na'Vi. EG want to win both their games today as they go up versus Na'Vi first and next. They will play Fnatic and Fnatic are obviously feeling the same. They want to win both their games. And last, it's going to be Rock's Kiss versus Alliance. And if Rock's Kiss are going to go through, they're going to have to win that game as well. So we can talk about why and the standings mm. in just a little bit, but also we do have a competition for you guys at home. Uh, the competition is to win the Asus ROG motherboard we got here. It's actually getting released, I think, today. Yes. So, and you can take one of these home. All you need to do is head over to facebook.com forward slash ROG Nordic and fill in who you think is the MVP of the Super Weekend. So far for me, it's no tell, and uh, Fnatic get to play twice a day, so we'll see if he's able to keep that trend, because he's been playing pretty amazingly. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's really interesting, because um, every one of the players that played really well today, most of them are playing again. Uh, I think it's only Empire that finished their games from the guys that played yesterday. 
Um, not only about players, but also the teams, what can happen with them. We've been discussing with the admins uh, about um, 10 minutes ago. And there's so many possibilities for pretty much everyone qualifying and everyone being eliminated. Yeah. The only people that are really safe are um, Empire, Cloud9, Alliance and Dog. Yep. But everyone below that, they can be removed. And everyone from Rockskis upwards, they can qualify. Lots of possibilities for triple ties. Looking forward to it. I think that's the like best thing you want on the last day, right? You don't want to yeah. go into the last day and have like essentially everybody decided and meaningless game being played. But yeah, I'm looking forward to what can happen today if we get a triple tie. I don't know what we're gonna do, but you know, yeah, like, to do. it's like a chance for like two triple ties yeah. or yeah. like three. It's really crazy, and it's not even like your fate isn't even in your own hands as well. Of course, you've got to win your games, uh, but some of the teams need certain like matches to go one way and then win their games. I think that's Rock's yes. kiss. Um, need that to happen. But they still got that chance. And I think the game that they need to go one way or the other, I think it might be even the first match, Fnatic versus Alliance. But yeah, I'd have well, to check on that. Yes. They, they need, need Alliance to win, don't they? They need an Alliance to yeah. win. Yeah, yeah. yeah they need to Fnatic not to do well today if you're a Rock's kiss fan. So we'll see if that's going to happen. Uh, yesterday, we had some pretty awesome games. Before we get into the standings and schedules, we could just recap what happened yesterday. So we saw six games yesterday. Uh, first, that was Meet Your Makers against Empire, and Empire were the victors of that one. One. Yeah, I think it was not surprising to anyone. No. Um, the only uh, thing that matters is for Empire to finish first. in style and first. Mm -hmm. They still have the chance to end up second if Cloud9 wins the game today. But yesterday it was all Empire and MYM, oh, this, they tried to do some stuff. This was so good. This, I think this yeah. is the fight where Resolution skewers everyone into the yeah. other team's cogs and uh, everyone's yeah. set. He played amazingly that game. Like I know, I agree with what James said about the MVP for No Tail throughout the whole day. But Resolution played like a monster this game. Like it was, it was insane. When yep. he got that invis rune mid and got that double kill on Tiny and Wisp, it's like yeah, the whole game just opened up from there. Resolution used to play for IC Cup. If you remember that from last year's qualifier, yeah. they were a team that did not do too well. Um, but uh, Resolution was kind of like the Magnus player. And he was particularly amazing for that. It didn't shine up that much because the rest of the team wasn't as good in general. But now you can see him going back to the Magnus, which he normally doesn't play right now in Empire. And he shows how amazing he is in that hero. Yeah. yeah, Resolution, if they got to play more Empire, I definitely think he would be one up for MVP just based off his Magnus performance, yeah. Yeah. like some mm -hmm. of those uh, skewers. And he really like tore the team apart in the mid game when he ended up getting that invis mid. You know, picking up multiple kills, I think that Tiny and the Wisp died, and yep, I think yep, one yep. more under the yeah. tier one tower mid. Exactly. So they played pretty amazing. Um, so Empire won that game, and you know, as we know, they are definitely secured to go to the DreamHack Summer, but they might not be going in first place, depending on what happens with uh, C9. Uh, next up, uh, last yesterday, we had uh, Fnatic versus Team Dog. Now, Fnatic, everyone was like, we're not sure if they're going to win. And yeah, then you were sure. I was sure, sure and then good. No Tail happened. Yeah. Uh, really, No Tail was just on the ball this game. Yeah, he did everything he had to do, but I mean, let's not take anything from the rest of the team as well. Everyone played very well. They were playing a, a kind of a race strategy against a Dog. If they delayed it too much, they could be there and safe and just win, but they had to hold it against a Viper, against some very aggressive picks. But that nice Stalker was out there creating havoc all the time, and look at that Fisher Glove. Like, yeah. no, you're not going there. Like every fissure was just Every fissure was so well timed. And this was one of the fights that actually Fnatic, they were kind of behind in this situation. Yeah. And they were forced to go Roche. And there were three buybacks from Team Dog that ended up like securing the victory and kind of keeping themselves just a little bit ahead. But uh, the story was Cottle and Earthshaker on the defense and stopped Bob the Rose Viper yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. from being able to go high ground or even the Centaur War Runner. What did you make of those two kind of supports and do you think we'll see him again? I think for me, if you ever want to learn Earthshaker, that's a replay you download. And uh, when he uses Fissure, a lot of players just use the Fissure and have the end just stun somebody. Mm -hmm. He would get the stun from the Fissure itself, but also proc every Aftershock. Like he yep. blink into two, stun those with Aftershock, and then stun the enemy team, preventing them from coming in to rescue the team. I think using that uh, Earthshaker like that, I think, uh, James, you pointed out yesterday, if you put any other Earthshaker player in there, they might not have won that game. So um, it's, it's no small words to say that I think Notel was probably the best Earthshaker player I've seen up to this day. Wow. That's saying a lot. What did you make of uh, Kotal, Shane? And I thought Andy? it was really good because Ira could actually die. Like he died and they were really close to the tier two tower and they couldn't actually push because the uh, Kotal would just blast out the wave and they had no push at all. Yeah. It was pretty good. I think maybe Viper could have been different. Like could have been different hero, but yeah. The Cardinal and the air checker definitely were kind of kept him in the game yeah. for the uh, hey, long haul. Um, for Luna. Also, the, the SD from Paz, 
was pretty spot on that match as well. Yeah, like, he, he played a really nice match. And to be totally honest, I think in some ways, Fnatic actually made that game harder on themselves. Like think about Trixie's initiation top when the entirety of the other team was in a perfect position. Like Poss would have been like disrupt immediately or purge. And then Trixie's just like, we're going in. And he did it two times, right? In really awkward situations. So it's, if they didn't do that, I really feel like the game would have been easy for them to win. So otherwise, I think that everyone did their part. The thing about like Earthshaker Coddle is that the closer you are to your base, the more important those heroes become to stay alive. Because if you die and the other team is right outside of your base, then you don't have that like buffer where they have to run from like Roshan or like all the way down mid to get to your base, right? Yep. So like Fly and No Tail never got picked when they were by their base. They were always alive. So even if Era dies, like Shane said, it's irrelevant. So as long as they can keep the wave push out, it's fine. All right, well, Fnatic uh, took the match over Team Dog, and that left them on a standing of six wins and five losses. And going into their next match against Alliance, they couldn't afford to lose. So uh, they were able to go in with some confidence and come out with a victory. And again, it was uh, a lot of it was no tell on his Wisp. And he really, you know, we don't see it here because we're already at the Roche fight, but his Wisp ended up early rotating in terms of going from mid lane ridiculous. to top lane, back to mid lane, and picking yeah. up the first three kills. He got double kill. Kill. four minutes. Yep. Like, yeah. Yeah. He, he won all the lanes for his team. And I'm, was this cute uh, Chain Frost with Acceptor that would keep bouncing and bouncing, but it didn't do much. I want to say, though, in this game, S4 on uh, the Panda played like amazing. He would like the Tornado Summon and like the Spell of, and instantly stunned them. Yeah. They couldn't actually he do anything. He went from 0 and 2 to a 10 minute Blink Dagger. It was yeah. really impressive. Right? Yeah, because Even he started off dual lane mid, right? Yeah. Like he was a Panda against Wisp Tiny at play. Oh, that and was really yeah. 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 so good. Then he dies, but he could have maybe so. Ah, uh, I don't think he could Come have lived, on. But he played it as good play. as he possibly uh, could I, have. I'm, like, not, I'm not pleased. <laughs> I, he he played that amazingly, but just in the game in general, uh, even I underestimated like the damage output of a tiny who goes like Aghanim's BKB. I was kind of questioning. And also like just how hard it is to kill when you've got yeah. a whisk. Yeah, it was, that, that was that was, was a surprising factor. Yeah. Because like you saw like uh, I think it was Marana, Admiral Dog. Yes, and yes. also was there a Luna? Loda? Yeah, Loda yeah, didn't yeah. really yeah. have that much farm though. Yeah, he, but like even though you had Maelstrom, like Maelstrom and stuff, yeah. so you think like, okay, this Marana could end up being pretty scary with that one more item or mm -hmm. even with the items they had, but it just didn't seem to phase Era on that tiny. I mean, Notar was always in position and always, you know, just keeping him alive. I think yeah. like even at the team fight uh, at the bottom of the um, Alliance space where they ended up wiping him, um, they didn't get the Aegis. Off, uh, yeah, yeah. Off yeah. it was insane. It was like, okay, you've used everything and you've kind of bought back with uh, your Lich, uh, Ake, and still nothing. Yeah, you have to kill No-Tail. You can't go for error in that yeah. situation. I think that's like the lesson that you take away from it if you're like not used to playing mm. against that combo. Mm -hmm. I think you suggested day on five yesterday. Didn't you? Not, not joking, you blow yeah, up the Wisp. Yeah, it is good. You, you don't kill the Wisp, you don't kill Tiny. But was yeah. it S4 on the Brew? Yeah. 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 In that game? Surely like one of the, like, okay, you got no, a BKB. Ake, Ake had uh, uh, Midas. Acceptor, Midas, Mech. Uh, no, he won Midas into Acceptor on Lich and then an uh, Ultimate Orb. Oh, Ultimate yeah, So that's enough to go hex. to get a Hex or a Dagon 5. And I think, well, hindsight's 20 20, but I think yeah. Dagon 5 would have uh, made a bigger difference. Or a Hex, even. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, the last three matches, I'm not sure if we've got replay clips of, uh, but it was Cloud9 against Na'Vi. Uh, Cloud9 actually won this one, which is not a surprise, but a little bit because they had a stand in. Yeah, um, they didn't have Sing Sing. Yep. You would say their best player? You One of you will say their best player, Cincy, mm. Cloud 9s best player. I don't know. I was I was sorry. I was really listening to production there in that moment. I was like, what? And then uh, to see you like staring at me <laughs> intently, I'm like, what did I do? <laughs> he um, just said yes in that case. Yes. Great. Perfect. I was gonna lie, but it's like it's fine. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they they played amazingly well, and Navi, uh, they just couldn't execute as much. The Medusa. Oh, we we talked about the Medusa. Yeah, endlessly, the Medusa right? and against the PA. PA that. He's a hero that works in 1% of occasions, and this is one of the... We are the 1%. I think the, the Medusa pick enabled the PA. Like I said it yesterday, and I still believe that's pretty, pretty true. Because in, in most lanes, if you send somebody mid against a PA, sure, the PA might be able to dagger some creeps and get some farm. But for the most part, the person that you're against should beat the PA, mm -hmm. right? But that wasn't the case. And then he got three-man ganked like four times. Yep. And not a single time did anybody try to help him. And looking at the team that Na'Vi had that game, they had support Wraith King. They had AA, they had Exert and Invoker. It's so easy for those three heroes to rotate and get kills. Like, obviously, Denny doesn't move, but he's able to Sunstrike on top of, like, Hellfire Blast and whatever else and just kill somebody. But they didn't do that. They just let him die 
over and over and over again. And he still ended up being the most farm person on the team. He was so, a stats and mana shield as well. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's the Medusa pick that lost in the game, even though I would also argue that that hero allowed the PA to get more farm. Because a Medusa can farm way faster than a PA. Like, mm -hmm. way faster. So I think they just needed to help him a little. Yeah. yeah well, the other thing as well was Pilei Dai from yes. Sweden playing that Sand King. Yeah. Like, that was another example of, you know, kind of like, his play was very similar to Notel's uh, Earthshaker. He was really on point and managed to get his BKB uh, up as well as his Blink Dagger. And then he was just a menace because no one was able to kind of uh, stop the ulti from channeling. Yep. So he played pretty fantastically. And it was Cloud9 who took the victory. And they're still in the runnings to take first place at the uh, league version of the ASSR Dream League to go into the playoffs uh, at DreamHack Summer. Uh, last uh, couple of games were both EG. Uh, the first one was against Alliance. And EG, this was, as we always say, when, when you need to win games, it's a game you need to win. <laughs> Just to you know, reiterate that. That's, that's what I'm such saying. a great you know, statement. But, yes. but the point being is that that's yeah. all, what we say about everybody who's in the matches right now. It's the game you need to win. And they did. And it kind of went a little bit wrong for Alliance. Uh, S4 played the Invoker mid. Uh, didn't have a great time. You can see Arteezy here. He was able just to be an absolute menace. He was level 11 when uh, S4's Invoker level was seven. level 7. And they even picked up a support Kunka. You can see there, played by Zyke. That's just going to... Hit a ghost ship, and he was, able to right send, he was able to send uh, Arteezy back. Apparently, I lost it when that happens, you know, like, especially asking uh, Zai in the interview. So, how were you able to send him back with X? <laughs> yeah. was, like, was that the reason you picked the hero? You know? <laughs> but it was a really cool trick. And, yeah. uh, we Hopefully, we see more of that. Yeah, mm -hmm. a very young characteristic of uh, both S4 and Amiel Bulldog. They lost their lanes pretty bad. Uh, the trial lane went pretty well for Alliance, but uh, I mean those two lanes hurt them so much that they could never get back into the game, which resulted in 19 minutes GG. And we thought that was going to be the shorter match of the day. But surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, surprise. The last match of the day, EG versus MYM, turned out to be even shorter. Yeah, it started off 6-4 uh, for EG, and then after winning versus Alliance, they went 7-4, and then they actually went up to 8-4, which tied them up, I believe, with Alliance. Yes. Uh, so we don't yeah, have any clips of, I think it was with Alliance, but either way, we'll check yeah. it out in a moment. Don't have the clips of the last game, because it was long yes. as the replay, so you just have to download it, <laughs> and then you can watch it in your Dota client. Uh, so let's move on into the standings and see how everything's shaping up for the second day of the Asus RG Super Weekend. Yep. As you can see, Empire played all their games, they're going to be waiting there to see if Cloud9 can win their final game, which I believe is versus Team Dog. It's today, but uh, I want to say, but it's not going to be on the show, unfortunately, mm. today, because they had to reschedule. Um, so if Cloud9 win that, they will uh, go mm. first place. If mm. they lose, Empire will take the first seed, and Team Dog will still qualify. Uh, Alliance and EG were all tied up after yesterday's games. Um, what's going to be interesting here, I guess, is that both of them are going to be swapping places a little bit, yep. and both of them potentially <clears throat> could be pushed out. Mm -hmm. Because um, Alliance have two games a day, and so do EG. So the magic number is win nine wins. First. If you get to nine, you're through, for now. Um, that means it's Alliance and EG they win one game. They and look pretty safe. Yes, no, they're completely safe. Look, looking pretty safe. safe. <laughs> but we said that yesterday, and you told the EG player that he was through, and then he you did, did still yeah. lose two games. Yeah, it's fine. I just wanted <laughs> he's to give he's him probably going to throw today. He's like, ah, I don't <laughs> need to play this. Um, you know, because it was Alliance' turn to throw yesterday. Um, yeah. Then we have Fnatic currently sat in uh, seventh place. Uh, they have Alliance today and also EG, so two of the toughest matches, and this will be the big test for Fnatic. Can they win two in a row and solidify their place in the top six? Because that will probably then stop Na'Vi from jumping in front of them, because Fnatic do not want a head-to-head -head with Na'Vi, because if they go head-to-head -head in terms of same score, Na'Vi beat them yep. in the matchup. So your, that tiebreaker will be in Na'Vi's favor. So they have to win two. Uh, Na'Vi, uh, just outside in seventh place currently. Uh, they're going to be playing today as well. They've got, I believe, just one game today. Um, so they can at least uh, pick up that one. I don't think they've got a second game, but we'll check that in just a moment. Even if Na'Vi standings. loses, they yep. still have a chance if other results go their way. No, they only have one game left because they already played 13 games. Yeah, they only have so. one game. Even if Navi loses... Yeah, what he said is still right. Yeah. yeah. But, I'm but saying, what has to happen for that to happen? Well, uh, if Fnatic loses both their games, when they go 7-7, seven and seven, and Navi is also 7-7, seven and seven, yep. then as we said... They can tie-break and Navi yeah. will jump, the, okay. uh, jump up to six. <laughs> Um, yeah, and those are today's matches. It's Alliance, Fnatic, VP, Meet Your Makers, Roxkiss, VP, Na'Vi, EG, Fnatic, EG, and Roxkiss, Alliance. So every game matters, and we didn't talk about Roxkiss in the standings there, but they can go through if 
EG do well today? Yeah, uh, essentially, and Fnatic, Fnatic, do and, bad. Fnatic and Navi have to do bad. And then Roxkiss win their games. Wins yeah. their games. And yeah. Roxkiss will play against Fnatic. Uh, sorry, Roxkiss will play against Alliance and also Virtus Pro. So Alliance is going to be their big match of today. So with all that kind of being horribly explained, I think we're perfectly welcome to introduce the matches where whoever wins is going to be doing better. Uh, Great. First up is uh, going to be Alliance against Fnatic, and we can meet some of the teams in a second. Or maybe. Maybe, maybe not. not. I want players. I want to talk about them. Where are they? <laughs> this is us. Come on. Oh, we're. This yeah, is Fnatic. Yeah. I'm Era. <clears throat> I'm, I'm Taylor. Taylor. Hey, you can't both I'm be no Yeah, but <laughs> Shane is. If, like, okay, honestly, I want to be Fnatic. <laughs> Shane is definitely Trixie. Like, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be oh, fly? Okay. I'll take that, Andy. Did you ask to be fly? Yeah, I want to be fly. Okay, well, let's talk about Alliance first, right? Like, he's a karate master. Not Krav Maga, but it's even karate. Karate. Yeah. He can be. I don't know. Like the five of us combined. You know who's not fanatic? These guys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they're alliance. No. Um, <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. I noticed that. Yesterday they didn't have a great performance, but I, I got a feeling they're going to play a lot better. Mm. Oh. Let's leave it at that. Yeah. yeah. That's that's say a great, it's more uh, than a feeling. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you hooked on a feeling? Maybe. Just saying. It's going to happen. They're going to play great. Uh, Fnatic also came out fighting. Um, yesterday in terms of just really bringing their A game. Yeah. And I expect nothing else from them. Yeah, I mean, after seeing the way that they played it yesterday, and again, like, this is a Fnatic who are probably not as well practiced as they would like to be, and they still put on that kind of performance. So I think that I, I wouldn't expect anything less. I, I think what's important is get Notel the heroes he wants to play and get them the lineups that they're kind of used to play. Mm -hmm. And yeah. the thing about Fnatic is, like, they actually do really well with coordination lineups when it comes to team fights. Yeah. You know, the more complex sometimes it can seem to be for them, the easier it seems for them to execute the fight. Well, that's what happened when you get a team that has been playing together for more than two years now. Mm -hmm. I think no other team in the scene... It's it longer than two years, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah. probably Han, more than... In Han, if you play with the same... Well, yeah, with, yeah, if you can't Han as well, yeah. But they, they got together before TI2. Just, uh, it was, they were not doing well by them, but... If you count that, it's like two and a half years playing together, same lineup. Yeah. Uh, at this point, they know each other by memory, by heart. They just say, okay. When they meet in the corridor, they're like, oh, you're my teammate. Yeah. <laughs> I remember you. I, you. I know you. Yeah. <laughs> so um, that, that's why they execute the Wisp lineup so well. And that's um, why they get to play this kind of cool, coordinated stuff. And I want to add up to what you said. I think maybe if you're Alliance, in the second ban phase, you should ban the Keeper of the Light. Yeah, I, I would, honestly. Yeah, I because so. the thing about Coddle is, typically teams who pick it, you don't really think of lanes that can move around, right? Like, mm. you think static lanes for the most part. But the thing is, a solo roaming Wisp was getting kills. Like, yeah. if um, you can pick a Coddle and kills. still get kills with the other lanes because No Tail is just a monster and a hero, then I think it makes sense to ban it. So because then not, you're getting the best of both worlds. So right? it's not the Kado, though. So you ban the Wisp. No, no, no. Yeah, because, here's the thing. The other, the other match, they went Kado and Air Shaker. And yeah. they didn't rotate that match, but they had a lineup. Uh, like, okay, you want to push our tower? You can't push our tower. Sure, fair yeah. enough. I should so, say ban No-Tails heroes. Yeah. Like, I honestly. So. Like, yeah. I say, not? though, for, in, for the Keeper of Light, uh, EGM does, or Ake, one of them does play Keeper them Ake. as well. Ake plays a lot. So I think we might see a line actually. Why not pick Nyx? They pick Nix yeah. on the yeah. they pick yeah. on the team dog match. Yeah. Didn't matter. Didn't really matter. I mean, yeah, he was kind of pace. It didn't little Shane. bit. Misery um, played pretty well. Yeah, I mean, no, Fly but, died yeah. a bunch of times, yeah, but the thing lost. is, again, whenever he died, they were so far away from their base, and he was low low enough level to where it's like it doesn't matter because they're not going to get any real big pushes out of it, you know. So, uh, when you pick Keeper of Light, is there any kind of suggestion that like? you're okay with it going late game? Or is it just the fact that if things don't go well mid game, you can still defend your base? It's kind of both. Like if you can, if you have a bat rider on your team, for example, which I want to say they did both games. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, so you have, a, you have a bat rider who is very good at defending high ground. You have a coddle who's very good at defending high ground. And they had heroes who could still like make things happen mm -hmm. as well, right? Because you still have some form of initiation. And in one of the games, No Tail was playing Wisp. So it's like they had, a, a, I would say, a well-rounded lineup and I think that Coddle just fits into that because he's a hero who can find the farm where most heroes can't. Like, even though Fly wasn't super farmed by any means, I'm saying it's possible for him to do so. And it just makes it so hard to crack the base that you just can't really ever finish it unless but, you're super ahead. But, like, 
Okay, Alliance, surely, Lumi, they're not going to be scared of the Kotal or it going late game, because Alliance is one of their biggest strengths was actually transitioning out of the laning phase, where it might not have gone so well for them, yeah. and being able to just control the map more. And of course, this was more when Admiral Bulldog was playing, you know, Lone Druid, sure. Nature's yeah. Prophet, and was able yeah. to, to bring some split, split, a split of pressure. But they were also able back in the day to abuse kind of like uh, the jungle more. Mm -hmm. You know, they got a lot on their supports and playing very defensive. Do you think Alliance can bring back that really strong late game? They can. I mean, especially with Lone Druid getting a buff in the latest patch, the HP regen might actually matter when you're tanking Illuminates for days. Yeah. To me, what I is think it like 10 now or something? Five. 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 Two, three, four, five. Yeah, okay. um, I think the most important thing is actually against Kotal, for example, is breaching the base. Um, it doesn't matter if your creep wave is alive. If you could get your heroes in intact and be able to pick off the Kotal, generally at that point, you should just win because a lot of Kotal teams, they rely so heavily on the Kotal to say, hey, your creeps are never getting in, so we never have to fight you. But when a fight do break out, um, when you have things like, for example, Clockwork, just jumping in. Batrider. Batrider, for yeah. example. Mm -hmm. I just feel that against Coddle, you just need good initiation. And if you break the Coddle, you break the base. Right. And uh, Shane, you play a little bit of EGM. So you yeah. talk to him a little bit, presumably, yeah, he's if he talks back. Um, <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. Um, okay, we're going to have tweets in a second, but I'm going to ask this question first. Uh, what do we expect from EGM? in terms of drafting these days? Um, honestly, I don't think he's afraid to pick, a, pick anything. Like, he's like fairly wild. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't see something else and say, okay, these guys are doing this, I'm gonna copy this. He just thinks, you know, what's simple and what do I wanna do? And then just picks the lines from that, I think. All right. So mm -hmm. it's, it's more about what he feels comfortable doing rather than what other people are doing. Well, we'll see if that's going to work out for him today. Uh, Bruno, where can people get a hold of us on Twitter? Well, if you want to uh, talk to us on Twitter, you tweet at DH Dream League or hashtag Dream League, and it will show up there. Uh, try not to put too many self-serving tweets because we kind of look like assholes saying, ah, look at how people like our intros. Yeah, well, it's Wepes controlling it back there. God damn it, Wepes. But yeah, no, if you have any questions, if you want to uh, ask to, for example, clarify the tiebreaker uh, situation scenarios, if you want to talk to the guys here around us, if you want to put a selfie of yourself saying, look at me, I'm enjoying the Dream League or something like that, you can sure. do that. Sure, why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? Do that. And uh, yeah, make sure you uh, tweet in and uh, we'll check out uh, your tweets throughout the show if you have any uh, questions. If you're in the audience, you can also tweet. Yeah, you can also tweet. Is there Wi-Fi in here? Yeah, there is, I oh, think. Okay, this password is there. We'll sell you the password hmm. for a compendium. We really need a compendium. Yeah, we really need a TI compendium. Have you guys <laughs> seen that? Like how, like yeah. we, we, we were set up and then we refreshed it yeah. within like a, just a conversation. Like it went like $4,000. Yeah, yeah. And that $4,000 is not contributed by us because... Because we, we can't, can't spend money. <laughs> oh, apparently, <laughs> <get> more money. <laughs> apparently, somebody in the audience told me you can buy it through PayPal now. What? No, you can't. You definitely can. Yeah, because I, I you didn't have know to that. put in your American address, but when you do, be like, hey, you're not in America. This yeah, that's a, true. Uh, that's true. Oh, so it's still IP. not going to no, work. Yeah. work. Yeah, that's true. Great. We use the Valve. Phone. Take my money, Valve. Hmm. Uh, Wepes has got his compendium up to level twenty-seven. By playing or by Where paying? Where do you get money? I think paying. Okay. I don't know. I think you have to pay about... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to Cyberma, and if you want to pay up to level 100, which is kind of like the optimal level where you get all the rewards, and after that, it's like kind of the same thing over and over, uh, you have to spend about 40 to 45... Uh, yeah. No, not 1,000. $45. That's all right. Yeah, uh, it's not bad. And then you get like a lot of stuff. Well, you so. have to buy the compendium in the beginning. So no, no, it's like it's like 10, 10, no, 10 plus 35, so... Okay. What's uh, the immortal uh, items going to be? Uh, they haven't been revealed yet. I, I hope there are a lot of Because there's like... You can get like 13 caches or something, like, you know, treasures. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You can get, uh, like, after level 100, per, you get one per 10 levels. Yeah. And there are people that have, like, level 600 compendiums. Uh, Andy, like said, what did you say earlier? What, what, oh, is, what, about, what did, did I say? You say? The, the guy that had, like, a super high level yeah, compendium. What level was his compendium? Oh, there was a guy who had a compendium in, like, the hundreds of thousands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so here's the thing, right? Like, when you get that, it's you insane. get a battle boost of, like, 10,000%, which means that every game you play... You get, I don't know, like three, four, five yeah, items. Yeah, yeah. And then you play bot games because they count for your level. And then you get like 10 items from one game. And you get game. 10 items and then you break the market. So Why that can't person you play is investing games? like, because bot games are faster, like you can win them faster. You get less points then. It's, no, uh, it's you, can, you, can, you, can, you can get a bot playing bot games, for example, if you were a bad person. Mm. You're encouraging that, are you? No, I'm just could saying, you that's your, what could you give that, that's, called, that's called being a white hat. Could you give yourself like insane bots and then the other team easy bots? No, no, it's like you match make against bots. 
Oh, with other people, yeah. Right, with you other can't people. do it that way. Five stack that. I don't know, man. Five I don't, I don't play bots. <laughs> yeah. Bots but are fun. They're too good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, they have like perfect timing on all their abilities. <laughs> yeah. and they, 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 they go they, together like as yeah. a pack. Yeah. And, like, they, they know when they can kill you and they just go yeah. for it. But, I actually yeah. took someone into a bot game and we ended up losing um, ages ago. I, think <laughs> I it remember was, that. It was I think the, they, the other team had like this, this death ball yeah. that was like just Luna and like Sven Could be. or something. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. I remember that. It was really um, difficult. But yeah, and so I was playing support. I don't know, like after seeing that, they got like uh, 3.2 million already almost, uh, which is like what would have been techies last year. Yeah. Because that was a techies goal. We missed it. Yeah, and no, we're not getting techies this year. But yeah, after seeing that, I called Gabe and I asked him for a race. He sent me a bottle of Viagra. I don't think he understood no. what I meant. Well, maybe he did. Or maybe he understood too well. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it was just your accent. He read it in your accent in the email. Good um, Okay, uh, we should be getting pretty close to getting yeah. this match on the way, the first game, Alliance versus Fnatic. How are the uh, teams looking in the uh, We were just asking if they were ready, and the teams are actually just, I think, just said, yep, we're well, Alliance are ready, but Fnatic haven't said anything. So we're just waiting on their A-OK, -okay, and then we can start the game. Right. Um, predictions for the match? It's hard. I mean, after Alliance's performance yesterday, I would like to say that Fnatic could win, but I have a yeah, feeling Alex that Alliance... Garf Alex Garfield doesn't like Sam Matthews. Ah. Uh, you know. Okay. Alex Garfield uh, likes. So Alex it's going to be an intense match. I don't know who's going to win. Yeah. Honestly, <laughs> intense match. You don't know who's going to win. Yeah. I think the match is going to be decided in the draft phase. Like it's going to be one of those matches where they are so even. There's actually <laughs> not a lot of matches. And then that are bots decided will take draft. over and play the draft. <laughs> yeah. Right, pretty yeah, much. That's, pretty, that's what all pro gamers do actually. They like just, the draft is important, but there's actually like a very small percentage of games where you see a draft and you just like. This team lost. Well, that's that's what's going to happen. Do you think that's, that's what's going to happen? There's no way happen. that draft's going to go that way. Yeah. No, no. Okay, if they pick Enchantress for No Tail, Fnatic's losing 100%. Right. Or Stein King. Well, Stein King's a great hero that can make plays. Enchantress is not. I watched him last year in the Dream League. Have you seen him play Enchantress recently? Yeah, I mean, it's one of No Tail's favorite heroes, and he plays it very well. It's just I just don't think the hero could do a lot outside lane stage. Dude, you said a wisp shouldn't be able to solo roam and get kills. That happened. Hey, man, just <laughs> yeah, three goes. times. I think an enchantress is actually way easier to make stuff happen than a wisp in comparison. No, no, yeah, no. But like late game wise, wisp is way better. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, like the the points in the game at which they're relevant are different. All right, who's gonna win, Lumi? He didn't say. Fnatic, if they don't pick enchantress. Okay. And if There's they pick clause. enchantress, it lies. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go with Fnatic as well because they played so well yesterday, and Alliance didn't really play that well yesterday. So judge enough how well they're playing. Very simple, Shane. I like it. I appreciate mm. that. <laughs> Based off the last I'm, performance. I haven't slept. Leave me alone. <laughs> oh, yeah. Slept in the studio room. But you made a beautiful, beautiful <clears throat> table. Yeah. And five, five chairs, them. apparently. Yeah. Apparently. Well, I only ruined Andy, one. Andy, how many chairs did you make? Just wondering. I slept, man. <sighs> See, people got the stereotype all wrong. I'm not going to take the credit. I, uh -huh. I don't care if you guys built it. I just slept. He's just going to use it. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. I, w I built like I think I built two chairs. Could have been three, but I got stuck on Bruno's chair. <laughs> that chair was so to, bad. I, I, I was like, I was like trying oh. to fix that. I was like, I'm not giving up, man. I went to IKEA to buy this. <laughs> <laughs> this Allen key, there's something. The thing wrong. is, that I I literally made that chair in like all the instructions wrong, like all of them. It's like I was you trying. You were looking at the instructions. Yes, of course I was. Dude. Doing it by heart. I don't think the instructions tell you to hump the chair, which you did for like 10 seconds. But it was very effective. No, it wasn't. That's because why it was I, didn't hump the, I didn't hump the first chair. And that's, when, that's uh, where I went wrong. Okay. Secret ingredient. Uh, Bruno, um, who's going to win this match? I tell you already, it's going to be the draft. Okay, the, the draft draft's going to win. Well, you don't have a preference on who's going to win. I want, okay. You just say the draft is going to win whatever team wins the game. No, I want Fnatic to win because... Uh, You're wearing their colors. I'm wearing their colors, sort of, I guess. Uh, but also because I think it will create more interesting scenarios by the end of the day. So I'm looking forward to get to the final couple matches saying, I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. And for that, we need Fnatic to win. Well, if the Lions win, that right. can happen as okay. well. So they're in? Yep. All right, let's take it away. First game of the second day of the Super Weekend here. It's going to be Alliance versus Fnatic. Best of one. Enjoy. It's the last day of the group stage. It's Lions versus Fnatic. All right, you had like more hype saying it that it was the last know, day right? than you did for it was I actually know. a game. Like, come on. <laughs> we got to be excited about Get something. Get together, Lumi. You guys a bit. Okay. No, it's a, it's a last day of, of some exciting matches because a lot of things will be decided. And we're going to open things up with Tree and Protector. Uh, against teams like EG, you would never get the Tree and through the first phase because PPD is so good at it. But we'll see how EGM slash Ake will be playing this. 
I think it'll be EGM playing Tree, to be honest. It just feels like one of his heroes. Ake is the one who typically does with less items, and I think a tree benefits more from items than... I think like, it depends on who the other support is, though. So. Well, it does, but even if, for instance, they pick, like, a Rubik or something like that, well, I guess in that case, EGM would yeah, play the Rubik. Yeah. Well, well, one thing we know for sure is that Tree and Protector is going to try to at least get some levels, because you want to at least get to level 7, yeah. match your living armor and whatnot. What did the offensive try line with Tree, with Tusk, called? Okay, let's, let's hold on to the Tusk real fast. He's coming. I don't know about Tusk. He's coming. But the cool thing about Tree and Protector opening things up for you is it allows you to do a lot more greedy laning. Like if you want to go dual melee off lane, for example, Tree could be that. It looks like Fnatic's going to oh, go nice. back for the Earthshaker, so no tell. So far, could be playing it, but obviously Fnatic has ran solo mid Earthshaker in the past. Hani has played it. Also, Hani has played roaming Earthshaker in the past as well, so not 100% no tail, but we, yeah. could, we could see. And the Alliance are going to get their hands on the Rubik, which I really like against Earthshaker. I think they were kind of waiting to see uh, what hero they were going to pick for no tail before they decided to pick a secondary support, because in a way, Rubik still is really good with Tree, because Tree's damage output is deceptively high during yes. the early game. If you actually get in range, right? Like, if you get a Leech Seed off and if you auto attacks, he has the highest base damage. Like, you just punch yeah. somebody and it's like, okay, you do, like, what, 85, 86 damage or something like that at level 1, which is ridiculous. And if you have just a lift and a leech seed, it could be enough to get a kill. So, All right, looks like we're going to see a couple of token bans targeted towards the uh, other teams. Tiny team taken out by Era, which I actually never seen them play Tiny without, without Wisp, Wisp, so without Wisp, I'm not yeah. sure whether that ban is warranted. But at this point, with teams mostly drafting uh, their supports already, it's actually a good idea just ban out supports, or carry, excuse me. Maybe they're afraid of the Ogre Magi. Ogre match or tiny combo? Yeah. I don't really think that's Dude, a good combo. Faster cast point. And what, faster they, they from speed. like wait, was it Bloodseeker who got buffed from 0.6 to 0.4? Or was that Ogre as well? No, Ogre was like 0.56 to 0.45, like some random it was value. Only, it was only for the clock. You feel thing. it though, man. Like sometimes, like before the patch, you would try to stun and you would get fogged. Yeah. And now it's like those stuns seem to always go through. You know who needs a better cast point? Bane. He also gets fogged all the time. No, yeah, oh, no but he's, he's already good for pretty good. Yeah, like, okay. All right, that hero easy to tiger. <laughs> Just buff all the heroes. Continue changing the game before TI. Make people as confused as possible. Actually, since we are just a little bit early into the draft, who do you feel like benefit from the draft or benefit from the patch change the most? Like talking from all the Western teams in the Dream in League. In terms of play style, mm, it's hard to say really. I think. In a way, most teams nope. could run Coddle before. So I think like the Coddle change is just, it's one of those quality of life changes that you have and you're just like, okay, well, people are going to notice the hero because we obviously gave a buff to it. But I feel like the hero could have still been used in the same way that people are using him now. Like for example, Fly, I don't think got an Aghanims in one of the games at all. Like he just- No, he did. He got one. He, he, he got no, one I said in one of them, he didn't yes. get it. As in they was... played two games and, and one of them he didn't have it and they still won. Yep. So yeah. that's what I mean. It's like, it doesn't make or break the hero, but it makes people notice it. All right. Um, just going back to the draft, I think Nyx Assassin is a really, really great pickup. Uh, Shane, you were talking about picking up to counter the Coddle. You know, when you see Illuminate coming, you just tank it. Mana Burn's going to counteract. Also, Mana Burn's really great against Darkster. Being an intelligence hero, he does have a fairly nice ink growth. But his mana or his spells cost a ton of mana. So if you stick one or two Mana Burn on him, he actually can't cast uh, not only his spell, but ideally like Mex Shivas and whatever yeah. else. So yeah. Yeah, Nyx is a great pickup, and I imagine Animal Bulldog will be playing that. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming pretty much the same. Uh, Fnatic are actually going to go with a Morphling here, which I do like, because if you look at Alliance right now, we talked about the Treant Rubik, like when it was just two picks in, that it's it's still a decent amount of damage output because of the tree. But when you add a Nyx into it, Nyx is more of a team fight disruption hero than he is like pure damage. Like, sure, mm -hmm. your Vendetta and your Impale Mana Burn do some damage, but they need someone else that can actually like finish the job. And a Magnus is a pretty decent hero for that. Skewer and Shockwave both do pretty decent amounts of damage as well. And it also gives them more team fight control, which it feels like they're favoring a bit more. I wouldn't even be surprised to see something crazy like a PA here. Because if you look at Fnatic, yeah. not a lot of hard lockdown, right? Sure. It's like yeah. you have Earthshaker and a Mana Leak. I mean, there are things like Blinding Light and Surge would make a, perhaps a melee carry a little bit annoying. We PA has but like PA the best stick, chase. Yeah, she yeah. could stick on people quite well. But I just want to say this draft looks like TI3. 
You know, yeah. Yeah. you see Magnus mid, Shreem Protector, the Morphling making a comeback, but obviously teams have innovated a lot since then. How do you feel about S4, who I guess arguably is the best Magnus? I don't know, Resolution's really well. given him some stiff Yeah, that's true, man. that's true. We'll see how S4 play it. Although I will say that S4 is one of the only mag players who I've seen actively turn their RPs, which means like when you RP, it brings them to the point in front of you, mm -hmm. right? And he's one of the few players who will actually like blink in, stop, turn, turn then RP, thing. and then skewer. Yeah, that's actually a big deal in terms of saving you a lot of time uh, yeah. during that RP duration for your teammate to do the damage. Small things like that really makes a big difference in a, a close fight. They picked Morphling into Nyx Assassin. Like I don't what? think it's that bad. The mana burn, I think, annihilates them. I mean, the thing is, who do you mana burn? There's so many viable mana burn targets. Morphling. I mean, in the late game, you would pretty much always mana burn the Morphling, yeah. more or less. Unless you were like trying to stop a blink from like ES or something like that. Mm -hmm. And, oh. I mean, having an Earthshaker against the Nyx is also kind of annoying, because we talked about the care pace yesterday. I think we saw this matchup yesterday, right? Yes. Yep. Because uh, No-Tail ended up getting a BKB. Oh. And, whoa, Fnatic are going to go Husker. OK, good luck okay. killing that hero. And this is Huskar solo mid against Magnus. Good that luck killing be. that good hero. Luck and they are going to go, go PA. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What, the, what would Toby say? What? Yeah. What would Toby say? Yeah. Called it. Called it? Because you didn't say PA? Oh, yeah, I did say PA, but right. I was like, whatever. But you're not awake either. It was pretty right, obvious. Guys. All right, we're going to have a PA. <laughs> And uh, we're gonna see defensive trialing versus defensive trialing, right? Like, uh, we're not... are we really? I think it could be aggressive. Fn Fnatic could be aggressive. It, I think yeah. aggressive trialing actually smashes Alliance's lane. So you yeah. you go Huskar, Earthshaker, Keeper of Light. Why not? And, and you just can go test range. the pole super easily. Sure. Or you could go Morphling, Earthshaker, Keeper of Light. Why not? No, well, Hani's playing the Morphling. Oh, Hani's so. playing the Morphling. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. we we actually know like <laughs> cheaters. <Yeah. laughs> We got the we got the hacks, but I want to talk about the Husker PA matchup because it's really interesting. It's like you have fifty percent evasion once you get to that level in the game, right? So like mid teens ish, and then Husker relies more or less on burning spear damage for the majority of the game until at the very least he gets an MKB. Life break still hurts a lot for sure, mm -hmm. but. I think we can say with some confidence that the PA is probably going to get a BKB at some stage. He'll probably do what Envy did yesterday, which is not buy a BKB first, but buy it after his first item is yeah. already done. So that way you actually become like a significant threat during the mid game. Now the skill build wise for PA, do you think he'll max blur second, like what Envy did yesterday, or do we see uh, maybe a little bit more blink strike today? I think it kind of depends on the style that your team is playing, because if you're not going to be fighting, there's not really a, a huge reason to max Blink Strike, mm -hmm. and you can just have a higher amount of HP because Envy didn't go Life Steal yesterday until after he had BKB and Battle right. Fury. Do you and actually, I think he made another item on top of that before he got Life Steal, didn't he? I think he got an MKB first. No, 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 he a got a Abyssal. Battle Abyssal, he got Abyssal, Abyssal yeah, yeah, Badger yeah. and Abyssal. And he didn't have Life Steal then. Well, the, the game so. was over by that point. Right, just, but yeah. the point I'm making is that if you have 50% evasion and like a Battle Fury, you don't actually need Life Steal to stay high HP when you're farming. Okay, fair enough. But I think this game, maxing Blur might be a great idea, especially against the Huskar, who yep. is... That's what I'm saying, like he would. Yeah, yeah. I think PA annihilates Huskar, like late game. Like, late game, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Unless the Huskar gets overfarmed. Like, if the Huskar gets an MKB, and like has a decent amount of items, yeah. then I think it's going to go pretty well for Alliance. Also important to keep in mind that if the PA does go BKB, and power is not going to work, so maybe he'll go for like a, a drums build and try to play... Like, maybe without the BKB, mm -hmm. it is possible. It would be tough, though, against Fnatic now. Because before they picked Husker and Morphling, it's like, yeah, the PA is not really going to have too hard of a time against these heroes, but Life Break and Waveform are still a significant enough burst to make a hero like PA feel kind of squishy. So we'll see. Yeah, in the past, uh, PA, for Alliance at least, was always pick alongside w a Wisp. And you definitely need the additional damage output that a Wisp grants you, as well as the survivability. So we'll see how it plays without the Wisp. And uh, the lane's going to be actually a Darkseer plus Keeper of Light. Meanwhile, you see no tell on the top lane doing the same thing that I've been doing yesterday. Just okay, cutting just the trees. Like, I just want to mention this. Ake okay, next level that safe lane. Because the range creep was so far in front yeah, yeah. that the range creep would have died first and pushed the wave out, but Ake just stood there tanked and it. tanked it so yep. it didn't walk down. Like People probably are like, why is he just standing there? But he actually stood there for a very good reason. Beautiful. What a player. One thing that Alliance don't do is they don't actually buy sentry wards at the start of the game very often, unless they have like a jungler. So they're like so greedy on their supports. Yeah, but I mean, the supports right now are enough to zone out Trixie and Fly, right? Like these two heroes, especially Fly, if he gets caught, it's going to be almost a guaranteed kill. And Trixie mm -hmm. would be forced into leveling level one surge because Ake does have leap seed. Right. Oh, he does have Iron Shell now, so no, no take backs on that level up. Yeah, okay. So he actually can't go to the wave. Yeah. 
Um, with that said, with Keeper of Light being here, he's also forcing the two supports here. Like, I, I don't think normally a Rubik by himself would zone out Darks here. Although that could be pretty close. Oh, look at that weapon on S4. What the hell? Yeah, it's That's the awesome. new uh, Webus gave it to me. Or no, it was you, Lumi, actually. Yeah, one of my viewers gave it to me and I gave it to you. For a price. So much For sharing. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't actually sharing yet. <laughs> he, he ripped had to me off. Okay, never mind. Never mind. Everything's fine. Oh, Admiral Bulldog gonna get spotted out here. No tail season, but Era is nowhere to be found, so. Nix's base HP re regen. Look at that. Three points. Why is coming in here? There's an Illuminate. Oh, they can't kill him. Okay, well, I mean, Unless... if he's a little bit body blocked, yeah, block. Fissure? Yeah, that's gonna hit. Okay, okay. well, <laughs> I just got trapped out. <laughs> All right, yeah, that's fine. I don't think Hani's gonna roll to you up top. No, definitely not. Trixie's going to the jungle, though. Yeah, he has to. I mean, he can't go to the wave until he gets to level two. And even then, if he gets a surge off and EGM is close enough to be able to lift when the surge is cast, he still dies. So. I would say that's a big win for Alliance. They essentially forced two people off the lane, right? Since uh, Keeper of Light started there. Meanwhile, now we're going to see EGM rotate to the top to help things out. I think having EGM here is a great assurance. He's actually fairly decent as a defensive support. Uh, but hold that thought, because we might see a gank on the mid lane. Maybe. It's really hard to kill Morphling, man. Like, you would have to lift Skewer, like, over the river, and even then, I don't think he would kill him. He would yeah. probably just wave for him out and be fine. And more top lane Fissure, that's gonna hit an Admiral Bulldog. He does have Spike as well as a Brain two point of sun. Yep. Uh oh. Brain Spear is running him down. Well, that lead, living armor is getting canceled instantly. Illuminate's gonna fly in. Impale will hit onto two, though, but he's quite low. Burning Spear slowly oh, draining him. his HP. Uh, One more hit from the high ground. No, not long Oscar's enough. Oscar's attack range is pretty small. Yeah. So. You think throwing that spear, you get a pre fire look. Have you tried to throw a spear before, man? It's mm. tough. Look at him, look at him, he's buff, man. Yeah, he's, he is kind of ripped. All right, so during the early game, it's PA farming for Husker. I think Fnatic, if it goes ultra late, like Husker and Morphling together should be able to like deal with a PA, but then you also have to keep in mind S4 is going to have RPs. You're going to have overgrowth that you have to worry about too, which is actually extremely annoying for heroes that would want to go like quick BKBs because you just wait the BKB out and you're going to have to use it, yeah. right? And then you just overgrow it and you're like, well, shit. And let's not forget about the farming power of this PA because not only is she going to, you know, farm quite quickly with Blink Strike, there's also Empower online. So we haven't really seen this melee combo of Magnus plus a melee carry lately, but it's running rampant since TI3 and it was always quite effective. Yeah, I think he might actually just go Battle Fury in this case because it's not really that hard for Alliance to delay. They have a decent amount of wave spam. You have like Fade Bolt, you have Shock Wave from the Mag. You can just tree armor towers. They should be able to turtle it out fairly well. And I don't think that turtling is going to necessarily be detrimental to either team. Like, they both have their strengths, yeah. right? It's going to be down to whoever plays well and gets, like, the most out of their farm. It which looks right like now Alliance might be getting. Loda is actually going to go for a ring of Aquila. So oh, looks lane. like we're going to see a lift. I don't think we're going to oh. see this kill. <laughs> okay. Almost. Yeah. He couldn't see with his voice around. So a ring of Aquila on PA is fairly interesting because it doesn't build into a battle fairy, which is normally the item you want to go into. But early game stats is never bad. The mana regen is very welcome as well. So we'll see. Maybe it's an early game fighting build coming yeah, up. Like it could be. Phase yeah. Vlad. If you think about it, fighting before the Husker gets life break and before the Earthshaker starts getting levels, because ES is still good in lane if you can block. But until that point, like between then and the late game where he gets a blink or a mid game even, oh. he doesn't really do much. Gym. Yeah, the blinking on Trixie on the bot lane, but there's no Siphling Dagger. There is a Siphling Dagger, but TP already came in from flight. They could actually go and fly instead, but now they'll, they'll back off. So we see lanes resuming since uh, minute one. Nobody... Oh, nice block. Okay. Bulldog. I'm a Bulldog, though. He, he's got Living Armor from afar, but again, that Living Armor not going to do too much since the Flaming Spears are burning it down. Six stacks. Look at that damage. Is he? He yeah. might be dead. Yeah, I is. think so. Oh. It's going to be close. He needs one more attack. He's going to gain the Jesus. movement speed. Oh, the stun's going to hit him. Oh, and please. Stop shields. <laughs> okay. Two stop shield procs. If it would have been three, I think he would have died to the Huskar, but well played. Uh, drawing Huskar off the lane, but I guess no is getting the farm. How oh. hilarious would it have been if he just stout shielded every attack yeah. and yeah. an area killed him? That was close, though. That Quelling Blade is definitely value. Like, I think we saw it yesterday in the safe lane when No-Tail played it, and then today in the safe lane and No-Tail's doing the same thing. He just puts himself in such a position that he can just throw it all the way across the lane every single time. Yeah. You saw Fly getting it on uh, Cull as well yeah. yesterday. 
So the big difference here between the early game of these two teams is that the off lane for Alliance is getting significantly less farm than what Trixie is able to get, right? Because Trixie can just go to the jungle, Fly can stack the jungle. So I think Fnatic's team is maybe a little bit more efficient in terms of what their early game has to offer. They're doing double pulling on the side of Alliance, but this isn't, like, you're not farming as fast, right? Like, you cannot farm a Coddle Darkseer as these two supports. No. But they're doing the best job that they can do. Yeah, they, they're trying to keep up. But that said, once uh, Ammo Bulldog turns level 6, the lane on the top frees up. He's going to be looking to gank uh, perhaps the supports, oh, but it looks like we're going to see a gank coming in. He has an Iron Shell, he has a Surge. He's going to just take this entire stack. I mean, yeah, I think not? this is actually a lot oh, better than... Oh, that's so shit. much yeah. money. They're, they'll just back off. I mean, if they get a support kill, they get a support kill. But here comes Skewer. No, nah, Strength Morph is going to be fine, and now Trixie goes north. I think even if that hit, it would have been pretty hard to get a kill. Like, RP doesn't do that much damage. Top lane. And my Bulldog making well usage of his Spike Kerpus, delaying his kill. He's doing really well up here, considering how much he's had to deal with. Level 5, like... Yeah, I mean, experience-wise, he's doing well. But I'm just talking in terms of, like, pure gold. Like, how much. Oh. Fnatic can like farm as comparison to how much that Nyx can farm. Mm. There's not a lot. No, it's a sad day. Yeah. I mean, honestly, Nyx really just care about getting six, right? Like, Loda's like. I don't think Loda's missed a creep, actually. That sounds he's, like Loda. He's 52 and 15 right now. And in comparison, the Husker is 36. Now, granted, Era's been running around chasing. And speaking of, Bulldog, he pops the Carapace. Hani doesn't attack into it, and Pale's gonna hit on two. Trixie's here as well, could surge, but gonna decide not to. And Hani's going to be forced away. Yeah, Rune's going to spawn on bottom. Looks like uh, Ake will secure that for his team. Meanwhile, Lotus just attack. applying pressure, which is something that Huskar Dyer's is not doing. Let's not talk about Huskar. Uh, he's going to be going for a quick armlet. Armlet into lifesteal is going to be his build, you think? Who, for Huskar? Yes. Um, yeah, armlet's still an extremely good item. Like, it's cost efficient, right? For any strength hero. It's pretty yeah. much the best item Dyer's for damage in the game for yep. strength hero in terms attack. of cost, so. And then lifesteal afterwards. The lightning lord, or do you? Yeah, uh, I would. I think lifesteal is probably the right choice. Okay. Because if you get lifesteal, then it means you can do Roche. Like, Husker is one of those heroes in pub games. I'm sure many people have played against it. He gets to like level 11 or 12, and he can just kill Roshan. With a mask at that too. Yeah. So it's it's actually pretty hard to stop as well because he can be one of the only ones in the pit. Yeah, by himself. Yeah. And then the rest of the team protect you. If you get a dominator, so you can get the wolf creep. So, would you say, based on what we see so far in the draft, uh, it comes down to how quickly Alliance farms before Fnatic hits their critical breaking point of, you know, a four-slot Morphling with a shotgun? Well, um, or is it something else? Lotus going for a Midas. I yeah. like it. It's a fairly late Midas as yeah. well. We got well, I don't want to say late because he's actually farming very well. It's just that he decided not to buy it, like, straight up. Mm -hmm. Like, he bought the Aquila first. So, the timing is still going to be a little bit late. And I think they just decided that they want to be a bit more efficient because I, I think they realized that Fnatic, farm-wise, like Trixie's got 29 CS, Bulldog has like, what, less than five? Oh, he has five. Yeah. So the mech is going to be up much sooner on Fnatic than Alliance are going to have, which means that Fnatic are going to be fighting sooner. But Alliance do also have a team that isn't scared to take engagements. Yeah, and I also think that the attack speed does sizably increase fan, uh, PA's damage output, especially when you put in power on top. Like, she could just go in right now and, and get a couple easy kill on Trixie if there's a lucky Cryptic Raw. Mid lane here. Ammo Bulldog dropping low. He's level 6, but critically, is he going to find any targets to gank? I guess Fly would be one if you find Yeah, Coddle's pretty much the only one. And even then, if, if Fly is at like a high amount of HP, I don't think he can solo kill him. No. So, passive early game, who does this favor? The, the PA that just picked up the Midas, the Morphling that needs a lot of farm, Huskar that should be doing a lot but isn't. Well, if nothing happens, I think it favors Alliance. But if Fnatic start fighting, oh, nice block on S4. Okay. Oh, Ooh, skewer pass, one hit away, and here comes the living armor. He's going to survive thanks to his bottle region as well. Yeah, he got armored as well when the Shockwave, like, yeah. as the Coddle Blast was hitting, even. Still no first blood. No, there is first blood. No. Well, I mean, technically Bulldog died, but he died to neutral, so oh, it wasn't right. first blood. Radiant's I mean, if you look at Fnatic, they have a lot of way to cancel that living armor with a spear as well. Fissure, waveform, and... Okay, Carapace. He ran back. Good skill. No, yeah, I thought he was going to just strength morph and just walk next to him. Just tank it up. That'd be next level. Yeah. Although Morphling is, like, tied for one of the slowest heroes in the game. So. Hey, man, you, you got Surge. Yeah, that's true. All right, armlet is finished, so... When you toggle Omelette on as a Strength Hero, was it plus 60 damage for 2400 go-ish? 
Something like that, yeah. It's an item that, interestingly enough, isn't picked up that much anymore. But it's still very good. People just stop buying it because the toggle doesn't instantly give you the survivability anymore. Like, that was patches ago that it used to do that. Well, but... I mean, whenever strength carries are picked, it's always bought, right? I guess the only exception was yesterday's game on Night Stalker. Hey, man, I've even seen it on Tiny. Uh, I guess. Or Tiny bought Tiny's it on Tiny. That was pretty funny. But I think that game was kind of, like, weird. Clowny. Mm. Yeah. Clowny Dota. NA Dota. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Hmm. Flo's just stacking. Doing his younger thing. The biggest concern that I have in Fnatic right now is that PA is one of those heroes that, if left completely alone, can be a huge threat. We're going to see us 4 take some damage here, but he's, he's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of... It, all it takes is one or two engagements where the PA just gets crits, right? Yeah. And you have Empower on them, and you just pick off one or two heroes straight away. And then Alliance are going to be able to just run the fight over, because their chasing potential is actually quite high. The Mag will have a blink. Mobility on PA is very good at pretty much all stages of the game. So... When they get something, they're going to be able to take quite a lot. I, yeah. also, I prefer Alliance's team for base defending as well. Because you have like RP on top of Nyx, on top of Tree and Protector through BKBs. I uh, mean, on the other side, we saw the power of uh, well, Lightning yeah. Light, Fissure. Yeah, their counter pushes, yeah. like, but I'm talking like fighting potential. Okay. Here we go, we're going to see a surge on Huskar. He's going to try to run past, but here's a rotation coming. EGM has strength, more if he's going to get jumped, and that's going to be first blood. Trixie will draw thanks to the Iron Shell. And they'll get the tier 1 tower as a result. Are we getting any trades on elsewhere on the map? No, there's nothing. In fact, it's going to be a Fnatic TP on bottom fly. Already oh, positioned to get the experience. No matter for Blast, though. He actually As for just bought his Blink Dagger. Okay, this could be a big RP yeah. up top. Here we go. Blink RP turns around Ooh. like Ed talked about earlier, but strength more of us well. Huskar being very, very tanky. A Fissure in the middle of that's going to be Loda dying in the beginning. No blur action for him. Ake throwing out a Leech Seed. Not going to do too much. A buyback, I think, being used. Nope. No, just a no respawn attack. Blink, Shockwave, not doing anything. Yeah, the problem is when you go in as a solo mag and you RP a Husker, like... And a Morphling. You're, you're not killing him on your own, right? right? Like you need somebody else to be able to do damage. And Loda TP'd and it just fell over. He yeah. just yeah. died. Dyer's middle tower. Yeah, Loda's That's gone for... Oh, we're going to see more dive. <laughs> the jump from Era and EGM straight up dead. Dunk. The burst and the range of this combo is absolutely insane. Yeah, Husker's a legit hero, man. When you get low health on a Husker and you're a support, do not be <laughs> fooled. You are not killing him. Run away. Don't click. Unless you're Bane. Yeah, Bane can. Yeah, Bane's just like Fiend's Omni Knight. Yeah, uh, no, attack. didn't they change it? Radiant's no, it's pure damage. It is pure damage. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, he can kill him too. Goes through the... Timbersaw is good against Husker as well. Yeah. But it's one of those situations where if you're a Rubik or a tree, under no circumstances do you try to man fight that here. Because yeah. you will lose. I just want to say that whenever you pick Huskar in pubs, the other guy picks Omni Knight and you're just like a sad Dyer's boy. Because you actually can't do anything, right? Radiant's no. Well, you, you dunk in attack. and then the guy gets his health all back yep. from the heal and then you lose even more health. Yeah. And, and then, then you, like, you, they Guardian and you're like, well, okay. life's hard. No oh, S4 going nice. for the skewer, brings okay. no tail into tower range. Should be a free kill. He does get fissured. Oh, they're going to go in as well onto uh, S4, but they can't really do anything. Well, now we could tell which uh, Earthshaker Fissure belongs to which, because one does not have that. Oh, that's cool, actually, yeah. yeah. I mean, cool is one way to look at it, I guess. I don't know where you guys are standing in terms of, like, should you be able to tell which Your team should be able to tell, but the other team should, should not, not be, be able, able to tell. tell. Okay. It should work like illusions. Yeah. I just want confusion to happen. It makes things more Yeah, but exciting. you're confusing your own team. That's fine. How is that fine? Don't I thought it was a team it. game. Figure it out, guys. Oh, era, the oh, that dump, but the reverse dump coming up. Don't click. Don't click. S4 is trying to go kill, no, but Era is like, no, no problem. Oh, he, he doesn't get the kill. Why didn't he toggle? Yeah, he messed up the toggle. Well, I mean, he still got them both, but <laughs> he didn't have to die there. Because I think No Tail, he's stunned, right, after this here? And he had time to toggle his armor? No, he's stunned before. Well, either way. I am disappointed, Era. Yeah. No, it, it is hard to toggle the armor. It takes a while to build I, up. I think it's actually fairly easy to toggle against one hero attacking yeah, well, okay. you. Yeah, okay. When you pretty much can't die to magic damage. I don't think he needed to toggle there. Like, No, he did. He looked like he had enough health. S4 had him power on. If Man, he hits him again. He he's, had Helm of Dominator, that plus armor. You're constantly losing HP, though, if the armlet stays on. And you're not out healing it with life steal. Yeah, you are. Don't worry about it. At least not it. at this stage. Well, you, Husk, Husk, definitely not. speed and damage, man. 
There's right. no way, dude. Rune of Destiny coming in. We will never know. I think, honestly, Fnatic could do Roshan very soon. Like, with Era's farm and his yeah. items. Yeah, like, perhaps. an armor mode enough, or alone is enough to kill Roshan, actually. Like, depending on just if you on get, like, own? super unlucky. Yeah, because you can just toggle it whenever he hits you. True. I mean, if you get chain bashed, maybe you get super unlucky, but for the most part, you can just kill Roshan with these items. Yeah, maybe they're looking to destroy that tier one first to give himself a little bit more room. And honestly, they're at a very good stage where RP has just been used. The PA is not really online yet. You have a double damage on Hani. The Phaser is really making uh, their life really annoying, though. Yeah. A oh, armor. here is like going on. Here is this totally is a bit safe. optimistic, man. S4 could have like blink skewered him there, and he would have been dead probably. So since this Huskar is a hero that we don't see too too often. Oh no. Okay, they got the replicate. Denied. Okay. Got him. Mm. How do you guys feel about Urn on Huskar? It's an item that we see a lot for like you know mass quick healing, or do you think if you're playing it as a one, it's a waste of an inventory slot? I think. I think so as well. What about like a mid Huskar? Mid Huskar, I think you could buy it. Yeah, it's like Pudge. I think it's good on the mirrors. The problem with Urn is it's like 875 gold that you're investing into an item that basically means you're going to be farming less and fighting more. So what's wrong with that? I mean, some heroes it's fine. Like, like again, if you're mid, it's okay, yeah. right? Because you plan to be more active and you're not necessarily getting farm priority. But for Era, who's going to be most of the time attacking creeps, this doesn't feel like a great choice. Mm -hmm. I feel like we've seen the power of Rubik coming into play with those uh, fissure steals because. I think if you have a Huskar that's that strong right now, an RP being down and a double damage on, uh, on Morphling, you should be able to take a tier 1 or the Roshan, and they have done neither. So I think these fissures on the mid lane is uh, keeping Alliance in the game for now. But we're going to see a gank up top. It's going to be an offensive relocate coming in. But uh, Loda, he senses it. He backs off. Well, I think anybody pushing in the off lane that far is going to back. Look, man, I'm just giving the guy credit. Okay. I'm just looking at where he was, I'm pretty sure he would have just backed anyway. It's fine. Is he definitely dying. Pretty pretty dead. S4 with the I'll skewer over your dead body. It's fine. Ooh. They want to fight this still. S5 mid right now. I mean, 5 mid not going to push against Kato, right? Like, yeah. really, It really doesn't matter that there's 5 mid. You can blink skewer him pretty easily when he's channeling Radiance a little bit. Yeah, he's looking for it too. Oh no, he's gonna TP bottom. Maybe they want to try to kill Honey. Honey is a tough kill though, man. It depends on if you're getting crits. Yeah. Still pretty high. Loda does have empower as well, and it's level two coup de gras, so. Oh, it depends if he's gonna wait for him in. Here we go, they're gonna actually go on no tail, no tail, say ain't so. He's already trying to run himself out of the blink. RP, oh. skewer backwards. Well, Honey's gonna be fine for sure. No tail, not so much. I don't Replicates know. back out. He has waveform in two seconds. He's not yeah. using it just right now. He waveforms forward. Loda's gonna be right there, and he's gonna go right on Hani. But the mech's gonna come through and heals him up. Yeah, that was nice by Hani though. He waited for the dagger because you saw Loda in lane chasing, right? Yeah. But if he waveforms in front and Loda has dagger off cooldown, then he just gets daggered and dies. Yeah. So waiting for the dagger on Trixie was the right call. I actually think that's a victory for Fnatic though. Sure, they lost support, but it was a five-man rotation. You can see that arrow on the top lane is destroying that tier two, uh, and Keeper of Light was forcing the push on the mid lane. If they don't lose this tier 2, Fnatic, I think, comes out ahead. We haven't talked about Hoskar with a PA dagger. It's actually like pure damage. Yeah, it, when it crits you, it still does full damage, which is pretty nice. But I still feel like at this stage, their farm is even, but Era has items to fight, and Loda has a Midas. Farming items, yeah. So, I mean, Lifesteal is still very good on PA, but he only has 900 HP. So, if he gets like dunked and fissured, he's pretty much dead. Yeah, and waveform takes half his life. <laughs> yeah. EGM got his hands on uh, the run fast ability, which is actually pretty good considering Ake is 6 now, so you can like surge the tree in for an overgrowth or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and like the Axir's uh, really poor cast point. You buzz around them, yeah, you, so you, just, you just cast it and it's instantly there, so pretty big deal. So I think right now if you're Fnatic, you just farm your Earthshaker, right? I think a Blink Dagger really increased their killing power, or defensive yeah. power. He definitely needs it. EGM steals Fissure now. Man, Fissure is such a good spell on Rubik. Yeah, it's a big thing. Like, normally we, we talk about spells that are stolen, but Fissure is like one of the most disruptive skills in the game, mm -hmm. if used mm -hmm. properly. So it's important to note like when he has it. Is Loader going for BKB with a Mithril Hammer? Uh, I would hope so, because you can't buy a Desso with a Dominator. So, I mean, yeah, I suppose he could, buy, he could buy Maelstrom. Yeah. Yeah. 
but I think it's probably going to be a BKB. It's weird though, I don't know why people do that, buy the Mitchell Hammer first. It's just because you have the money and it you're going to fight. Uh, yeah, it costs yeah. And it helps you farm faster if that's what you're caring for. True. I, I mean, he got rid of his Quelling Blade some time ago. Era just working on a tower, it doesn't really care. He should just actually still think he's... Era, by the way, has 35 I think he might go well. hard. I think he really might just go straight hard. Why not? He's got the farm, um, Blink Skewer in. Can you armor toggle this one? The Fissure is blocking everybody off. The Blinding Light that prevents oh them. Can we see a big vacuum? Vax one back, Overgrowth's gonna be there. Fissure's gonna come through. Can they kill Ake? Ake's on the run. He's actually might go into invisibility. No, he does not have Nature's guys on the back line. It's gonna oh, blink, blink no. RP. How does he still have RP available? Era, he's not gonna jump in for the dunk at least yet. We're gonna see Waveform coming on the side. Load up Blinks in for one coup they grab, but not really do anything. There's nobody dying except from Fly. Everybody kittens. It's like the good studio, nobody dying here. Well, I hope nobody dies. What? Well, as four goes back in, gets a skewer on Era, but that is maybe not the target he wants to go on. The Fissure though stolen from AGM. Nice. The crit comes out from Loda and they actually managed to get him. No tail could be in some trouble, needs to be careful. Loda's own illusion critting him. Now Loda wants to go on No-Tail. The Echo Slam is there. Hani goes for the waveform. Loda almost dying. He gets a dagger crit though and actually takes No-Tail with him. And EGM is going to be getting another kill this time on Trixie. Now they want to chase down Hani. Do they actually have the damage to take him? Here comes Fly. He should have another blind here if they continue pursuit. It's just AFK in middle. What is this? All mid? I think in that engagement, we see the power of Blink Strike allowing a very frail hero like PA being able to dance around the fissures. Because essentially, there was like four or five fissures, right? Yeah. And it's so hard for a hero like Huskar, who I guess you could jump over them. He's, he's going Maelstrom. Yeah, it's a Maelstrom. <laughs> Loda's going Maelstrom. When you blink in... It's for the Burning Spears, man. I, actually, it, yeah. I mean, Burning Spear will proc it every single time, right? As much as possible. Yeah. You don't. You just put it on whoever that's getting focus, I guess. Yeah. Next level, man. And Ion Shell as well. So somebody's like standing next to you and you have Ion Shell and Burning Spear. Like, sure, you're going to die really fast, but you're going you're gonna to become Zeus. <laughs> Dyer's top Thor. What an item. Attack. What do you feel like the reason was for Alliance winning that fight? Was it just a hero a little bit more mobile? EGM fishing. Like, I think it was people. Era having like the I'm Invincible complex because if you saw the positioning that he had, like, of course he's always going to be in front because he's one of the hardest heroes to kill. Mm -hmm. But he was in such a way that you have to imagine when somebody blinks in and pulls you out of range, it's like a bat rider. Like, like that's basically what S4 is acting as because you get skewered so far away from your team that they can't help you. Mm -hmm. And EGM had Fissure the whole time. Like he never stole another spell. So yeah, and not only did EGM uh, Fissure the Huskar, he Fissure off the entire enemy team. Something that and we the talked about. As well. Yeah, No Tail doing yesterday. Uh, so and I think um, the dagger crit basically ensured that No Tail died. That was a regular dagger. I think he lives. And when Era got skewered back in, Loda did get a crit, which is good. Yeah. Well played. Well played. So lucky crits coming. He clicked from Loda. that crit so hard. <laughs> oh! Uh, it's very interesting that now Loda is actually going back for a BKB. Um, I think a Maelstrom is actually a very good item for the cost in terms of what kind of damage you get out of it, especially since they changed how it that procs now. Mm -hmm. So you can, before Blink Strike, you attack so fast that you would actually be able to hit while the Maelstrom was on cooldown, which made it a worse item. But now it actually can just proc multiple okay. times. Yep. Now the the interaction that oh I'll satanic okay I thought he was gonna go hard but he went satanic. Essentially the same thing right the reverb being the big yeah but I here. think hard in a way is actually better because there's a lot of times where air is just not gonna be able to hit anybody and you just want the raw HP as supposed yeah, to yeah and you just want to be steal. able to live okay hmm. if he ever gets like one attack off he's like full HP because well he no, attacks so fast yeah yeah. yeah. So you mean he doesn't multiple get attacks. multiple attacks. Okay. Yeah. In the space of we're getting him one attack off, he could get off like five. I suppose if he goes like a later... Actually, I don't think he'll go BKB at this point. No, I don't think so. No. I mean, Overgrowth just shuts him down, right? BKB or B as well. Oh, they actually see him right now. Can we get the jump off? Uh, Era not getting the movement speed. Maybe we should have walked back for a surge. But in any case, Loda split pushing up top. Gonna force the TP for more. Tower is under attack. So Morphling's one of those carries that go six slots and you feel like he could not lose a game? I don't know, I think PA is pretty good against him. Well, when you have to worry about Nyx, like consistently mana burning, mm. like that's a really big problem. It cuts oh. Morphling's survivability by a large portion. Era's, yeah, already getting out right click. Yeah. It helps out Loda got a crit, but hey, that's part of the hero. Well, S4 has got an invis here, but there is a sentry down yeah, for Fnatic, so he needs to be really careful about where he positions. Oh, they're dropping another sentry! 
They see us four. Here comes the mana leak. Hani's going to be here as well. Got relocated in. Ooh. They even dunk him. They're just like, yep. You did. Roshan is just confused by that fissure. And that actually will buy them a little bit more time for the split push up top because uh, Loda says you could get the Roshan. We'll get to her too. Mm, I don't know. I think Flag could TP. Right? Doesn't he have a TP? Although I guess he wouldn't TP. No, he doesn't, have no he doesn't have a TP. Okay. I mean, TPing to him and then just getting. Well, you TP to the tier three and you blast. I right? suppose. But I guess it's daytime, so you would yeah. be seen either way. EGM also has a Blink Dagger now, so his initiation is going to get much, much better. Are, is Ake going to go for a Blink afterwards? I assume so. Oh, they found the Replicate here. Attack. They really think... Oh, oh Hani just goes to it. All right, no Bulldog's fear. here as well. They could actually just go for the kill on Hani, honestly. That was a really, like, ballsy move. He's going to be in trouble. He's dead, Holy right? Shit. Yeah, Blink he's lift. super dead. Crit! Blink lift. Okay. No. Morph! Yeah. Was he out of stats? No, he. I don't think he, he morphed just at all. It. Okay. I think, yeah, I just don't think he morphed. Well, that was... And yeah, they canceled TP, so that's a tier two. Hmm. And almost BKB on this PA. I mean, if he had a shotgun, I would understand why he would, you know, do that. Maybe Even if he kill. had a shotgun, it's like, the heroes that he saw, you can't kill EGM because he'd already stolen morph, which means he has a ton of HP and null field. Yeah. You can't kill the tree, and you can't kill Loda. So, I don't know. Hmm. He's rushing Keeper Light and Fly. Oh, oh my god, my brain. Rushing He's eggs, you mean? Rushing eggs. Keeper the light? Yeah. I'm kind of like concerned about the Husker, though, because it's very quickly getting to the point where Lotus is going to purely do more damage Dyer's than him. Like, Arrow will be able to go on supports, but Arrow won't be able to deal with Loda. That's the thing. And even supports have great ways to lock him down between Telekinesis and I think Arrow has lift. to be careful here. Yeah, he's going to get Batrider, as you will call it. But no, it's going to be fighting me on the background. It's going to be a two-man RP. Blinding Light making the miss. It's going to be a BKB activation. Overgrowth on the backline. Loda just critting everybody. No buyback from Fnatic just yet. Arrow on the backline trying to do whatever he can. It's going to get one kill on the Magnus. And that will be it. Two for one trade. Fnatic could actually maybe press down mid. RP is down. Arrow needs damage items, I think. Like, he needs to go, like, MKB, and then he needs to go, like, attack speed, like, maybe Assault Kiras or something. Damage. Correct me if, wrong, if I'm wrong, though. Isn't Burning Spear a big part of your damage? It is a big part of your damage, but... More in the mid-game, though. The like... thing is, you have to land your attacks for Burning Spear to work. Okay, well... All right. Hey, just... That's a DD. Are they going to go back for more? In fact, they will. It's going to be going on No Tail. No Tail is oh. going to get Enchant and Fissure off and the dunk. No. They want Loda dead. It's going to be a two-man impale. Stolen a spell from EGM. Oh. Waveform coming in. Well, are they actually going to get a single kill? They're not really a focusing crit. on anybody. Crit. Crit. Uh, that's going to come through. That's one crit. He's looking oh. for a second vacuum, keeping him in place. Loda, what <laughs> the fuck is going on? Meanwhile, on the back line, Ake's on the run. Do they have enough to actually keep the cancel the TP? They don't. He's out of there. Oh, he had adaptive, but... That was hilarious. He was on high ground. That's what I would be saying. That's what it feels like, you know? When you play against a PA, it always seems like they always crit you on the first hit. Yeah. And then when you play PA, you never crit at all. They always have DD. Yeah, <laughs> they always have a DD. Well, and uh, Loda this time didn't BKB and dispel his team. DD. No, that was Envy. Yeah, I know. I just, every chance I get, you know, I gotta... Gotta flame him. Yeah. So cold. So, I'm not sure exactly what the idea is for buying a second Ultimate Orb on Hani. Shkadi. Do you think it's a good idea to finish Scotty here instead of the Manta who you, you can finish? Holy it, crap. It could be. Oh because man. That's four. Alright, he's got blink. Kind of controls Fine. PA a tiny bit. If you land an attack, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he controls him. Half but you saw how hard it was to kill him. Like he got dunked in tower range. Yeah. And the tower did no damage to him. He got living armored and then he just walked away. Which is another important thing to note huh. too here is tree armor supplements PA very well. Like in terms of having early game survivability because the hits that you don't evade you cut by a very large amount of damage. Yeah. So the synergy between the heroes is really nice in terms of keeping yourself alive. You basically get 12 charges of the It's tree. also surprising that Era is not leaving his Burning Spear on. Hey, it goes through BKB, right? No, it's magic. Huh. Pretty sure it's not magic. It is magic. It's magic. Yeah. Fire is magic. Hmm. Except Klinks is not magic. Yeah, <laughs> Klinks actually is so magic. So fire is not magic. Yeah, that's a good point. All right. But his is the only orb that goes through Wasn't BKB. Wasn't that HP removal? Because Glaive doesn't go through, like, uh, Glaive's of Wisdom doesn't go through BKB. Orb on yeah, OD that was a, a specifically changed thing yeah, to yeah. make yeah, it more yeah. viable. Which I thought was crazy, because Klinks already did an insane amount of damage. It's like, ah, just make Searing Arrows go through it. It's fine. I mean, I think it makes sense. Why not make Huskar also go through BKB? Because it's fire! What? It that makes no leaks. sense. It's magic immunity. Fire is magic. It makes sense in my head, man. And sucking all the people into a small area. 
And covering them with trees isn't magic. It's not magic. Okay. Trees are a physical entity, man. It's nature. It's like Pokemon. F fire isn't nature? <laughs> Fuck off. I don't know, dude. Nobody knows what's going on anymore. All right, so it's at that stage in the game where Lotus Midas is uh, starting to get him a little bit ahead in the net worth, and he's quite farmed right now. Yeah. The demon edge mostly. Ooh, okay, oh, no oh, tail. 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 a little bit off. They're going to try to burst no, him down. This is BKB bad. gets oh, no. activated. Era lifted. Look at two crits in a row, and he's still alive somehow. I, I don't know how, but he's actually life throwing back. He gets overgrowth. He's not attacking us. Still alive is Era. He's evading the hits. He's life dealing back. He wants, but the RP's going to come through. It's a three man RP. Era still alive. Can he reach in? Yes, he will. He's bringing Prometheus into the sky of fire. Whatever he's doing, why is he still alive? Michael Jordan dumps into it. What, what is going on? The hell, man. Whew. Lotus, like, he's dead this time. Oh, no, I, I gotta hit him. Already he's dead. All right, no, he's alive. Already he's dead. Okay, we lost. Okay, so. No Fly, crits. Fly will raise your 50% evasion with blinding light. At 80%. Where are you at? Dude, that was insane. I can't believe he didn't die. I cannot die. believe a Rax will be decided by R and Jesus right here. And he didn't crit at all. Like, literally no crit. No, he did. He crit twice. Yeah. No, but when he, when he they were right in front of hitting him, he just wasn't critting at all. Yeah, the second time he went in, he yeah. wasn't. But I think he was assuming the arrow was going to die to, like, the next auto attack. So he was like, that. yeah, I got... Oh. You think that. And then he didn't kill him. The dunk's gonna oh, come on. He stopped the dunk with what? a skewer? <laughs> okay. Alright, he's gonna okay. be fine, right? Because uh, no, no, he's, he's, he's apparently yeah, he's fine. He's mortal. Fine. Stuff I think he turns here. Yeah, no? I think he's slow too. You have he satanic back in. Okay. Perhaps gonna go for Okay, the yeah, there's a tier two, actually. <laughs> Never mind. They haven't got the racks though because of that chase. I think that was a mistake for the rest of the team to chase along with him. That could be the Mailer Axe. That's a big deal. I like how you just casually dropped Prometheus in the middle of that. I mean, he's got a fire, right? He's <laughs> throwing it out. Yeah, that was good. Okay. Bruno approves. <laughs> also, By the way, Honey is like massively under farmed. Yeah. I mean, I guess he's got like a, almost a full Scotty on the courier, right? Yeah, okay. Yes. There we go. Now it looks a little bit better. Still under farmed. Still under farmed, yeah, but. And uh, Era, to me, also a bit underformed. Or perhaps the item choice might not be too good, but... Can no, he's, even... got, he's got an AC. Oh, does he? Yeah. On the courier? Okay. Yeah, Never he's mind, got a sniper stun. No, he is farmed. Like, Lotus got more farm than him, but, like, apparently he is not killable. So. I, I, okay, real fast, I just don't appreciate the AC choice. Can we just get Heaven's Halberg and, you know, RNG it up more? I like AC in the situation. I mean, it's a better item. Their I team isn't that. amazing for cracking the base until Morphling gets more farm, right? So having an AC helps. The plus five armor additive to the whole team when the PA is the primary damage output at this stage in the game, I think it's a really good choice. And plus, Husker, he's one of those heroes where once you get more farm, you actually drop lower health less. So you don't get the attack speed benefit from Berserker's blood as frequently, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So having an AC at this point in the game is actually a little bit better. Yep. Why does he not upgrade his boots? Surely treads or Dude. face boots? Dude. Gotta go for that value. Who needs BOTs? to upgrade their boots? I mean, you already get the attack speed from... When you can't die, why do you need upgraded boots? Fair call. That sounds as logical as fire being magic. Magic! Which is not much. Whatever, man. Freaking wizard. I'm just speaking from, from Volvo's perspective. I mean, what's magic about a tree? It's just you a tree, animate... Man. It fucking walks around and talks not to people. Non-living <laughs> objects to walk okay, and talk how it's not magic. <laughs> Whatever, man. It's fine. Radiance bottom tower All right, mid lane. Here comes a little bit of base defense. I mean, that look at how close together they are. They're just like <laughs> just like quick huddle care. together for warm. Oh. S4 will will care because oh. uh, Honey well. does right click pretty oh. hard. Honey's gonna die. RP. He's got strength morph, right? Oh, he dead. Oh, he's oh fine. maybe not. Maybe not. Oh. He's fine. He's got that replica. RP's down. You go for high ground. In fact, they are I think going for high ground. Honey was baiting. Fools. And of course, uh, now with Axe Scepter up, we gotta have Perma Ultimate on. If Arrow wasn't already hard enough to kill. Yep. Yeah, he has. He has healing on the background. What a dodge. And that Kree Wave's gonna get healed up? Yep. Oh my god. Where are you at? Mana Burn, Arrow says, I don't care. Tower's dead. The Rax will be dead too. AC, doing some work. I kinda like the way it only heals in daytime. It kind of adds a bit to it. So okay, it's nighttime now. Yeah, the healing's Dude, gone. Push finished. Go home, boys. Nah, they're not going home. They're going, they're going hard. 
Oh, oh, we're we're not not the Ooh, the dunk on the background here. The wall on top of that. The worst of vacuum. Wall stolen. Overgrowth on the background. Where is Era in the middle of this? I mean, he's in the middle of it. That's literally where he is. Trixie going to get daggered once again. Still going to be able to surge away. Era and fighting shape still. Does he have Disgusting. satanic? No tail. He's back. He bought out. He wants to continue fighting this. They're just going ham on the melee racks right now. EGM teleports in. They want to go for Era. Era turns oh, around. Oh, Mando, okay. he gets one crit. Okay. But Era's just man fighting. All right, not this time. Almost. Oh, the blink, immediate crit on the fly. Oh. The blind, it does nothing. The second auto tech goes through. Gem on Ooh. deck. Bulldog's going to drop okay. the stolen fissure and another Holy crit shit. from Loda. It's a triple kill. Give that man an MKB because he's got the money. Yeah, he needs MKP now against Blinding Light, 80% mischance. I think he just bought it. Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah. yeah, At the same time, Huskar also needs an MKB. Or do you think he needs BKB? Huskar? I don't think he needs BKB. He's getting so locked down such that sometimes... The he didn't get locked down. He was hitting the whole well, time. Well, okay, he was hitting there, but I think that was more so the mistake of Alliance support, not reserving his stem when his Satanic is on. Well, yeah, I suppose. But even if that's the case, you can still wait it out, right? Yeah. Like, you have to be really patient, sure, but you can do it. Well, here comes the Roshan attempt, and they're gonna... They're gonna kill it very fast. They will. Uh, well, it depends if Fly's here with the blinding light. No, he's in base. Now. What is that, 1.5k crit? Yeah, 1.5. 1, 1. That's not bad. Roshan is... Pretty decent. Yeah. Okay, they're not gonna get there in time. <laughs> yeah. It's like, in some universe, maybe, they're actually gonna deny the tier 2. Double TPing and then deny. Well, no. they don't have Echo or anything either, so it would have been really hard to fight in that position. Yep. And now Loda with the Aegis. I don't think Shield died twice, given the fact that 50% evasion, BKB well, and all that. It's going to be one of those scenarios where you basically have to ignore Loda, which is a big problem, because when you have to ignore the highest damage dealer because they have an Aegis, yeah, they kill you it's really bad. Yeah. Like, having an Aegis on PA who has some farm is one of the scarier heroes. It's the same kind of ideology as a Storm having an Aegis, because they use it incredibly well. They have high mobility, they can continually go for targets after they die. Like, they come back, full HP, blink in again, dagger somebody, kill another hero. So, it's one of the better Aegis carriers, in my opinion. EGM always has so much gold. I don't know. Yeah. Well, there's been a lot of fighting this game, and he's only died, like, four times. So... I mean, it feels like a lot to die four times, but when you're playing against a Husker as a Rubik, only having four deaths is pretty good. Huskar and a Blink Shaker, who could, you know, catch yeah, you out from anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Any thought on Honey skipping the uh, Ethereal Blade route? I feel like EB might be pretty good, at least in saving your allies. Yeah, I think getting rid of the BKB by just E-blading whoever he blinks on is really good. But you can't always assume that Lotus is going to just BKB straight up, you know? Especially yeah. now that he has an Aegis. I think you would have to E-blade even before the BKB. And then if you E-Blade him, he just BKBs the E-Blade. So you, it's kind of like a catch-22, right? I feel like even if you just E-Blade uh, Loda at the start of the fight, perhaps, I'm not talking about right now at this moment, but perhaps if he got it as a first item, I think PA has low enough strength growth where you kind of force him to BKB. Does that make sense? Yeah. I guess at the same time, there is healing through Leech Seed and Overgrowth, or sorry, Leech Seed and uh, Living Armor. So perhaps that makes it be, uh, the, the, the Ethereal Blade less effective. I really like the Mithram though. It's kind of cool. And Lowe's got a Satanic now as well. I don't think he's dying anymore. I don't think so either. Especially I think he has just become the unkillable. Well, I feel like Fnatic needs an MKB and perhaps a Hex. Then they could deal with him. Right. And speaking of Hex, uh, two huge items. EGM has one almost completed. Yeah. It's a thousand gold. Well, I was going for a hex as well, but he's much farther away. We have the same argument again, though, with the Aghanims on certain support heroes over the Well, decks. Lich Aghanims is, in my opinion, much worse than Aghanims Cuddle. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think in that last fight, he uh, was there a buyback and then an immediate relocate. Or recall, excuse me. Yeah, he got, No Tail got recalled in. Like, okay. he bought out because he went in, got, um, I think, stuck in a wall that was stolen from EGM or something mm -hmm. like that, and kind of just died and then came back straight away. And it did get in the melee racks. So. Yeah. It was fine, I think, to do that. I feel like that early racks, the early melee racks on the top lane that they did not get because they were chasing uh, with Aero. Because Aero dived like... Yeah, I think it's costing them perhaps yeah. this game if, if it, uh, Alliance wins this. I think actually Fnatic being a racks up, they're still not ahead. No, they like, needed I, to be two racks up. I feel at this stage in the game, with how farmed Loda is, that they're gonna get to a point where the Husker is not gonna be able to outcarry this hero, like in any sense. I think it's already reached that point. Yeah, probably. I think mm. with the Aegis for sure. He needs what, like 2k gold and he has MKB? And then he can kill her. 
Normally, yeah. in, in kind of these carry versus carry situations, if you have the weaker carry, one thing that you can do is drag the game out long. So long such you say that, all right, we're both six stacked instead of uh, you being uh, six slotted versus me being four slotted. Because well, he's not a full item ahead in net worth. He's like 2,800 gold ahead of him, which isn't a full item at this stage. Right, so. but the, the point is, PA is one of those heroes that it doesn't matter how many items you have, if she blinks in and gets a lucky crit, you're just down a hero. Yeah, yeah, that's so. Also, like late game, it favors her so much more. Also, lines have more setup for her as well, like more lockdown. Yeah, I mean the hex. Once the hex is gonna come out, we're gonna see blink hex from Rubik, most likely with a fissure on top as well. I think he has it, doesn't he? Yeah, Close. She, yeah. Depends if he's safe or buyback. Looks like he won't. Yeah, he's keep going all in. EGM knows no fear. It's a it's an interesting like uh, case study to say that EGM has this amount of farm, and instead of acceptor, which is an excellent upgrade for him, he's going for you know. A lot more utility based. It's good though. I mean, the Hex is, in this case, if they kill Era, they won the fight. Yeah. Like, easily. They Honey can... doesn't do enough. Like, he's got almost an MKB himself, actually, which is good. So, actually, I take that back. Now that he actually almost has an MKB, he does something. Because Scotty MKB means that the PA is going to have a lot harder time, like, having full reign over the team fight in terms yeah. of being able to just go on somebody and be like, yeah, you're dead. Haste. Now it's going to be like, yeah, I'm Scotty, shit. And. BKB Fucking doesn't do anything. Snowballs. Yeah. I'm, I'm still just completely surprised that uh, Honey does not finish his Manta against Overgrowth. It just feels like it's a, such a free thing to do. Well, Radiant honestly, I think the MKB is better than a Manta attack. here. Like, what is finishing the Manta? Oh, no, no, no. I, I agree you finished Manta. I just don't think the Scotty is very well placed. I think you go Manta, MKB, and then Scotty. Well, with I think the mentality that he's going with is he's not necessarily meant to have like high damage output or even be able to split push. It's just the ability to right click the PA and keep the PA from hitting his team. Okay, so like, allow Era to do the heavy lifting. You're kind of the yeah, second. Top All line. RP on to EGM getting focused down here by Era. He's gonna get hexed to skewer on three. No tails actually gonna die. He didn't get to echo. No dark seer wall either. Era is all on his own right now, trying oh. to man fight the world, and he can't do it. Out. Okay, this is where you just pray this that your mouth link is split push. There's buybacks on uh, on Era. No Tail does not have a buyback, and Darkseer does not have a buyback. So I, I, Era is the only one who can buy out. I mean, this is a perfect case to see whether Fly could defend and how well he can defend. No, right? not against this. There's no way. No, not He's actually going to get care pace done. Needs to be uh -oh. careful. They're going to try to go for him. Okay, they're getting forced back. Tower is uh, taking a ton of damage. Remember, they could just lose one Rax because they're up one Rax right now. There's a buyback from Era, but how much does that actually worth? They could go back for tier two as well. MKB will miss. not help you hit towers. So uh, that's 80% miss chance. So Rax is still alive. S4 is looking for a blink skewer. It looks like he won't find it. So with the Era buyback, they will defend Rax, which is not too bad. Yeah, it's cool. Honestly, like S4 won them that fight so hard. Like he got Trixie and No Tail with an RP. Wall wasn't dropped, Echo wasn't used. Like both those heroes die without ulting. That's that's literally fight one. But Bulldog stoned after the RP as well, which yeah. is also pretty good. Radiant's Such a good setup for a Nix and Pedal. Yeah. RP it bringing everybody like on top of each other. They're going to try to pick PA, who has a BKB. What's her initial stun? I guess it's going to be Earthshaker chain stun as well as Arrow dunking in. Yeah, it has to be a blink dunk, basically. They might. They might catch Lota here. They're smoked they up. Will. They They're will. They're going to see him. BKB activated. No it's going to be dunk instant stun. A hex on top of that. There's a dunk in from Era. Can they actually evade? Not during hex form. He's got buyout. He does, but forcing it out is a big deal in terms of slowing down his next item. They're going to try to push mid and force that buyout, but it has to be done quickly. They have to do this carefully, though, because if they try to go in and force a buyout and S4 ends up getting another good RP and they just end up getting team wiped, there's no mm -hmm. buyback on Era. Yeah. Also, great play from S4. He's just going up top to prevent the great blue gram from going in. I also think when you have a Keeper of Light on your team, getting a Breach of Travel on your Morphling just becomes that much more useful and just basically become the Rat Dota Lord yourself. You could argue you don't need it at all. True, yeah. With rel uh, Replicate as well as... as well as what you call it. Recall. Recall. The thing is, like, he wants to go top right now and Radiant push that wave tower. back, but he can't. And I don't think buyback would be forced because there's a Terra 2 standing their way. Hmm. Well, tower is a tower. Is Era... Is he close to his MKB? Does he have anything in the career? No. I don't think he does. He, he no. doesn't, no. He had to buy out, so he's kind of poor. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. 
The other thing, too, to keep in mind is that since the BKBs are getting to such a point where they're like four seconds, yeah. I think Fnatic having a four second BKB is much worse than Alliance having a four second BKB. Because it's not like Lotus getting purely disabled. And S4 is just killing their base, by the way. Okay. Like casually just going to pop the BKB, forces a glyph. Era can still dunk. Uh, there we go. Damage okay. is done. S4 actually going to die here, but he does have buyout as well. So, I mean, having your Magnus buyback instead of the. PA, if necessary, is already a good Yeah, trade. him dying there is actually yeah. not a big deal. And getting a Rax out of that is like, all right. He forced the Glyph, which means that the next time they take a team fight, Loda has bots. So if there's ever a lane that's pushed in and Alliance win the fight, since there's no Glyph, he can just go kill a Rax on his own. Okay, how about this though? If you look at the Roshan timer, it's going to be up essentially the same time that Magnus is going to be up. What's that? I mean, if Fnatic goes for the Roshan after getting a Fnatic secondary for pick. Smoke. They yeah. want Loda. If they actually get the pick here, they win the game, oh, right? But I think no, Alliance are actually going to be ready for this oh, one. Oh, they haven't used it. That's right. No, he still has Boba. Okay, it's going to be Nyx Assassin. Did they have this oh. ability? Where's the Hex? Oh, he BKBs and it's going to be Trixie on the run. run. It's a wasted BKB, though, unless they kill Trixie. Yeah, All right, they kill Trixie. Oh, you get the crit off. Meanwhile, Arrow on the back lane. The dunk's going to come in. Loda's completely trapped, but not for long because he's got Blink Strike. He's looking for No Tail. No Tail. Stay in the trees. One crit. There's a dunk the coming from Arrow. They're going to have to disable him. The two carries hitting each other. One oh, crit goes shit. off. The second enchant oh, no They get era well they get everybody how the hell the supports all die in the background alliance all dead morphling husker. man husker, morphling morphling. and husker were just pooping on them okay so there is buyback from oh, buyback tab let's go yeah there are buybacks i mean loda can buy back s4 actually cannot buy back he's alive holy yeah, crap he, yeah s4, but he bought is out he really relying like on he this bought one out tree. But i don't understand why he bought out oh my god oh they're not gonna go for it they're gonna go for roshan yeah, they can't contest. Like, and Roshan's not up though. But he's gonna be up very soon, right? Yeah. Okay, so who do you give the Aegis? Era, right? Yeah, I, I think Era is probably the best choice. He has MKB now as well. Huge. Yeah. I feel like Alliance has dodged so many bullets. That was still really bad. Like, you lose Loda two times, basically in a row, you force the buyback. Oh, oh no. S4. No, Loda. No, no. Loda, no. Loda, okay. no. No. Okay, Loda being oh, away right, from that's his team. That's uh. Okay, he still has buyback. He still just has go buyback. Base. No, no, don't rush that. Just go base. Oh, he, he just bought back. Yeah, he's dead for 100 seconds. He bought out. That's that's Rex down, boys. Yeah, maybe GG. Because the thing is, if Loda was oh, alive and it was oh. a 45, maybe. Bulldog, gonna have to use his vendetta here. But if Loda's alive and it's a four on five and S4 and Loda are both there, they maybe could defend. But if Loda's dead and they no, have an RP, that RP defending. doesn't do anything. Yeah. I mean, well, right now they're just S4 is out. doing the Nesk best thing, which is pushing the wave. But we do have Hani coming back in. Keep in mind, they have constant relocate. So, mm. a recall, excuse me. They have the perfect. No Tails here with an invis. No Tails here with an invis. He doesn't have dunk, though. Okay. He's going to get a fissure. No Tail goes in. Stuns on Ake. Meantime in the base. They're going to be able to find Bulldog. They're just going for dives right now. Ake is actually almost going to go down here. Please and get EGM's the top racks. back to base. They can't rat it. No, they yeah. can't. No, they're going to get the top They have racks. to run. No, Fnatic's getting top racks is what I'm calling for. In fact, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, they already have the base open. They have creeps in the base, so there's no backdoor regen. Era needs to lose more HP, please. Get more quicker <laughs> attack. Uh, and they are going to get it, of course. I think they're going to as well. Having an Ag Caldo in this case is perfect. Yeah, they just end the game. Between Morphling having Replicate and Coddle being able to pull you everywhere, you can't rat the team. Like, yeah. it's it's unratable. That could be Megas, guys. It, it is going to be Megas. Yeah, PA's Still not going to be back. Seconds. Blink, Blink forward, X. S4, yeah. They drop the wall as well. No-Tail comes in. S4 gets the BKB. It's an RP and a vacuum actually on four. But they're basically just trying to hold the line right now. You need to go for Megas. Lotus going to be up in five seconds. Their damage output at this stage is so high, though. That's yep. Megas. They get Megas. They can just off. run out, and I think they just get away. They have uh, power. Okay. They have PA. As, as we see Fnatic backing off, and I don't think there's going to be any chase from Alliance, is can this lineup feasibly beat Megas? Yeah. 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 Empowered PA can tank Megas forever. Okay, so... Holy crap, Admiral Bulldog's going forward on, on the back line. It's going to be EGM. Oh, he gets a hex off. He has a lift to follow. He's going to die. And PA's coming in hot. It's going to be Blink Strike. Can he get the crits off? Satanic Ooh. is popping off. He's trying to man fight this, but they PA will definitely satanic. win this. Well, at, at the very least, he's getting him his team enough time to get out of there. A big crit will finish him off. And I think if you're Fnatic, you just hold this one push. He's got buyout. Yeah, yeah. He's got buyout. Still has buyout. Oh, Trixie's about to This rat. is the all-in, though. And they are, they don't have RP. 
Yeah, Trixie's riding on the backside on the bottom line. He's surging in. He's got the recall. They got blinding light and, and illuminate. Trixie and fissure. Go. Hot No Tail's gonna block the creep wave, right? He's gonna block yeah, the lane. He can just fissure it. Okay, so much for your push. Well oh. Oh, it's gonna dagger forward. <laughs> Let me in. Well, Ake TP'd back, so there's no overgrowth, which means that if Arrow wants to, he can just buy out and they can fight this. And they're gonna see, like, Ake in the base. Oh, oh. they're just gonna go for a blink dunk, it's on two! Lotus gonna be able to get the BKB, but the Scotty MKB auto attacks from Hani just are too much. He's gonna bump the Satanic, though! He's doing quite a bit of damage. No Tail gonna get another enchant. There's the blinding light, a blink forward again by... Oh, never mind. Nope. He just died nope. instantly. Loaded down, Bulldog <laughs> down as well. It's three down on the side of Alliance. They are Megid, Arrow bought out. And this looks to be the beginning of the end. EGM has a blink. He's trying to bait out the dunk, I think. Oh, no, it's yeah, not even GG up. GG gets called. GG. What a victory from Fnatic. I mean, we, talk, we talked about how they were playing in style yesterday. Three picks in a row on Loda finishing the game. That was so... Okay, so did yeah. Fnatic win the game or did Alliance lose the game? I think Alliance lost the Why game. Why did he go to the bottom room that time? What was? He the... did it twice in a row. Yeah, but what, the, the last Like, he time. went into the woods, got picked, went into the woods... Well, Almost in the same exact spot, died again. But Bulldog was there, so it's like, you know, he has some backup. Not the, not when he bought back. He yeah, the last time he had nobody He there. was by himself. The rest of his team was like in the there. base or like, yeah. I don't know, man. I mean, was, was it one of those like, they're not going to try again. They're out of smokes. No, out of those smokes. three games in a row. They've literally three smokes back to back won them that game. Yeah. Smokes, what an item. We'll talk yeah. about this exciting conclusion when we come back. But, uh, what's our next match? Uh, our next match is know? going to be, yes, uh, it's going to be VP versus MYM. So it's kind of like an appetizer. We call no, it's before. not an appetizer. It could be a good game as well. It could be a Every good game. game could be a good Such game. an optimist. Yeah, but I mean, you know, then it's the games that actually matter and not just who comes last. All right, we'll take a quick break. Uh, here at the DreamHack Studio where Prometheus has shined. Oh, us. Monster, whoa, 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 Monster whoa, whoa, Energy. Whoa, whoa. Mon DreamHack okay, Studio. Okay. Monster Energy. So, this graph shows that there's been steady progress in our financials over the last quarter. <laughs> Excuse me, just one moment. <laughs> Billy Bobby, how are you, mate? Johnny boy! <laughs> Saw the match, right? Did I see the match? Are you joking? <laughs> Sorry, very important call. Now, note the number of digital impressions we've received. That's an increase of over two billion. Come have a pint with me and the boys! Yeah, oh, yes! Done, puppy, done! All right, then. As I was saying, puppies to hug, children to love, and billions and billions of rubies and emeralds in each of your pockets. Promise. Asus phone pad with Intel inside. Stop playing, fuck it. What's up, guys? I'm AP, and I think that the Rise series of mechanical keyboards is perfect for gaming Dota 2. With 5 macro keys and 3 thumbser keys, I have a lot more options in my reach to take care of Dota 2's peripheral actions. And if that's not enough, I can bind secondary functions to each key thanks to Easy Shift. This, the high quality Cherry MX key switches and the comfortable wrist rest make the Rise series my choice for gaming Dota 2.